It's time for Twig this week in Google. Jeff and Gina with our annual 9-11 tribute. We'll talk about the uh, ups and downs of Patriot's Day. We'll also talk about the ladies from Google. You know, they're making applets, standalone applets for Windows 8. Is this a new strategy? It's all ahead on This Week in Google. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for This Week in Google is provided by Cashfly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twig. This Week in Google. Episode 215. Recorded September 11th, 2013. What's Italian for MOOC? This Week in Google is brought to you by LegalZoom.com. Go to LegalZoom.com for affordable legal solutions you can trust. LegalZoom's not a law firm. You can get self-help services at your specific direction or speak to a legal plan attorney to get your questions answered and get ongoing advice. With LegalZoom.com, use the promo code TWIG and you'll get $10 off at checkout. And by Shutterstock.com. With over 28 million high-quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 30% off on your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use the offer code TWIG9. And by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free trial and 20% off, go to Squarespace.com and use the offer code TWIG9. It's time for This Week in Jeff's Rants. No, Google. <laughs> With featuring Jeff's Rants, Jeff Jarvis is here. He's at the uh, University of New York, professor of journalism, author of Public Parts and What Would Google Do? New Moto <laughs> X. Look at that. New Moto <laughs> X owner. Not new LTE-based Nexus 7 owner. No. Uh, for, well, no, actually, you're wrong, Leo. Oh, we'll hang on. Second. Hang on. Hang on. And also here, Gina Trapani of smarterware.org. That's her blog. And, of course, she's the author of Think Up and To Do Text and many other wonderful things. Founding editor of Lifehacker. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hey. Good to be here. So, we Jeff, are, this, go are ahead. Are you leaving for vacation? I but, am. That's uh, why I'm see? translating things into Italian. <laughs> that's right. That's right. When do you When do you leave? We're going to be Leo-less for like two <clears throat> or three weeks, yeah, right? Yeah, I leave next Tuesday, and uh, I won't be back till October uh, 9th. Or, yeah, I think 9th. Good is, for you. Yeah, Good for you. Excited. Well, Jeff and I are on the fort, but we're going to Yeah, you know, thank you. Both of you are hosting shows, which is wonderful uh, in my absence. But I am going to record the ads for you so that you don't have to sully your <laughs> Lily the White thank you. hands on commercialism and capitalism. You do this 300 times better than I would. So <laughs> no, I really but he has to do it 300 times. times. <laughs> Actually, you know what? We uh, Last year when I went on vacation, I did record like, I don't know, I can't remember. It was an ungodly <laughs> number of ads, but we managed to cut that number down a little bit. So that's a relief. So cool. Jeff, uh, last week we had a poll that made you open your Moto X. And I figured it's about a 50-50 proposition that by now you would either blame us or love us. <laughs> Or have, no. have, have reboxed. Or rebox it, chipped it back. Exactly. Bingo, I returned it. You did! You did! <laughs> here's, here's the rationale. Here's the rationale. Okay. I opened oh. it, and I used it for a couple days. My 14 days was, like, up. Yeah. And I didn't hate it, didn't love it, thought it was just expensive at, at $674 versus my, my Nexus 4, which I still have. And so I thought, I might want that Nexus 5. I could be kicking myself. What I really, I do want a new phone. I'm willing to pay for a new phone. I want it to have LTE, more memory, uh, you know, some new features and that kind of stuff. But I wanted to wait for the Nexus 5. Now, I, there's still a chance I could buy the Moto X. But we'll compare the Nexus 5, the Moto X, and the HTC One and make the decision at that time. That was my rationale. That's fair. Okay. Uh, now, the other good news is my Nexus 7 with LTE arrives tomorrow. Yay! Yay! Well, you could, uh, you know, you could use that as your phone. Just put Skype or something on there and uh, yeah. Hangouts. Yeah. Yeah. Will Hangouts make phone calls from uh, from a tablet, from an Android device? Or only from voice, the desktop? It'll do it from the started, desktop. Yeah. it's The voice has started to forward to Hangouts. Wait. Let me see yes. if I can make a phone call. Uh, it doesn't look like I can, at least not on this phone. 
through Hangouts, though, you can do you can do video, obviously. But I think. But I can make a call to a phone number when I'm on my when I'm sitting at home on my desktop. I use that yes. as my telephone. I can make a phone right. call to a regular phone number using Hangouts, yes. and mm-hmm. that would be if they put that on mobile. Who needs a cell carrier? Yeah. yeah. Right. That'd be huge. Yeah, and I, and I think they're moving toward that with voice and Hangouts uh, sure merging coming together. Yeah. Sure I mean, the problem there is you're using data, but but by the way, T-Mobile just put out today new higher limits on tethered data. They've got the unlimited still. T-Mobile's competing really hard on plans. Love them. And yeah. the LTE seven is coming with. A T-Mobile SIM and Good. one month, two two gigs free. Good. My car came with a T-Mobile SIM. Really? Yes. Really? Wow. <laughs> Isn't that bizarre? T-Mobile's my carrier. Uh, yeah. My carrier choice. Yeah. I use I'm T-Mobile on my Nexus 4, and I, it is the best. Mm-hmm. If you can get it. If you right. have T-Mobile, because nobody else is using it, although that's going to change. They've really been uh, growing. Hey, before we go any farther, we should, uh, and we do this every year, it seems, uh, but commemorate Patriot Day, uh, September 11th. Both you, Jeff, and Gina were in uh, New York City at the time, and you've told your stories before, very moving stories, but particularly Jeff's, who was mm-hmm. in the basement of the World Trade Center uh, when the first plane struck. I went back today, and I, I was. it's weird because this is the first year where I really had no draw to go back. Um, but I kind of last minute went... And and it's it's triply strange. Uh, first, because the memorial is now open for the first time on the anniversary, all of the activity around the commemoration moves to the memorial. And and if you haven't been there, the memorial is a fortress. It is behind all kinds of security. It's it's you have to go through an airport to get there. And that's that alone is depressing and and, and is troubling. But I could barely hear a bagpipe off into the air. Oh. So instead, what oh, you saw wow. was the the scrum of TV cameras there standing there saying nothing. You saw the 9-11 nut jobs there. Um, uh, Conspiracy buff nut jobs. Uh, just littering the, the earth. And then, you know, families were going around to go through the entrance of the memorial, and that was it. So there was, it was cut off, which to me is emblematic of where we are, where, where there should be an, a matter of openness and freedom. It's instead another fortress. And this happens at the time of the NSA revelations, uh, which, you know, the excuse for all of them is 9-11. And I, I confess my, my mistakes that I thought we could do more to bring democracy to the world. And I supported the Iraq war and I was wrong. Um, and, uh, but I, I, I was, it was a depressing 9-11 for me. It was, it was feeling we haven't advanced closer to democracy and freedom, but in fact are farther away. So that's my that's my cheery beginning of the show. No, it's a, I think it's an yeah. apt point. It's a, it's as if the terrorists won in in a way. Well, that, I almost used the line, and I couldn't find the right way to use it, you know, with without the right level of irony and mockery. But so I didn't. But yes, I think you're right. That's the goal of terror, is it not? To terrify yes. people, to have, to have them shaking in their boots, looking over their shoulder, paranoid, and it it worked. Yeah, it's very sad. And this is my first uh, my first 9/11 that I have a, a, da- a daughter, a child, and I was giving Etta her bottle this morning and thinking about it, and thinking that I'm gonna have to tell her about this, uh, you know, when she's when she's old enough, and it's gonna be a thing that I experienced um, that she didn't experience, and there's there's plenty of footage and documentation, right? But she's gonna look back at this the way that I look back at, or the way that I heard my parents explain about, you know, John F. Kennedy getting shot or the Vietnam War. Like, it's going to feel like a faraway thing that happened to people who are, you know, much older or dead. Like or us, who, like Leo. Who dressed funny. You don't like remember us. the Vietnam <laughs> War? That's really depressing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know. <laughs> no, of course you don't. Of course you don't. Of course you don't. Yeah, it happened oh. before. But for Jeff so, and me, it was World War II. You know, our parents yes. lived through it and remembered it. And we knew a great many veterans of World War II, but we didn't live it. We were born right. after it. Right. right. And it just, it struck me as like, oh, this is, this is a totally different thing. You know, Jeff, Jeffrey McManus, who actually just recently passed away. He, he, uh, he was at Yahoo for a long time. I don't know if you know him, but his, he, he had written this incredible blog post. His daughter, his daughter ha- had been born like three weeks before 9-11. And he said the way that he sort of experienced the whole thing was through the lens of having a, a, a child that was yeah. so small and that for so many years he felt, he would, he felt so bad. Like he would apologize to her. Like, I'm so sorry that I brought you into this into this terrible world, you know, that this, this, this wasn't a better world for you. And, and he, just, he had this incredible line when he said, you know, it took me years to realize that, like, the world isn't a gift that we give our children. Our children are a gift that we give to the world. 
Um, mm, and that awesome. was, that really, uh, I was thinking about that a lot today when I was, you know, giving it a her bottle and thinking about September 11th and thinking about, you know, how much things have changed and yet how many, how many things have stayed the same. I still can't, I still can't watch the video or see the pictures oh, without God, getting no. like completely clenched. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. I think this is a good time for, uh, this would be a good day, Patriot Day for people, of course, to remember that, but also to choose to stand upright and to remember that the principles of the United States are openness and freedom and democracy, not paranoia, uh, not, uh, you know, shutting down, but opening up. Amen. And yeah. uh, maybe that's, you know, uh, you know, 10 years after any tragedy, it becomes a tourist attraction. Uh, and that's obviously what's happened. It's very, it's kind of sad. Well, there, when you leave the memorial, you know, you walk through the gift shop. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. And but that's but that's us. That's oh. humans. We don't we have a terrible capacity for remembering pain. And I think that's biological because otherwise you wouldn't have children. You wouldn't Amen. you wouldn't <laughs> you'd just <laughs> you'd kill yourself. You'd go, oh, God, it's just going to be more pain for 80 years. And then I die. So you don't remember that. Otherwise, we wouldn't we wouldn't have a race left. The people the Neanderthals probably felt that way. That's why they didn't make it. Uh, but I, but I do think that it's important that the, if we do keep the memory of 9/11 alive, it's not as oh my God, what's going to happen next? Oh my God, they're out to get us. It's a, it's the memory of the people, brave people, who stood up that day and 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 uh, to inspire us to continue to stand up against terrorism. And that does not mean spying on our people, acting as if uh, everybody uh, who uh, is uh, Muslim is evil. Uh, that that's that's not what we that's not what this country stands for, and I would hope that we would remember that. I, I agree, and you know one of the problems I'm having these days is that is is with the Syria discussion, is and, and and recognizing the mistakes of Iraq. What are the obligations we have to other people on Earth? Where is the red line? And 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 I wish we were having that discussion. I mean, I'm glad we're having a discussion before launching military action. We're we're stopping and thinking and talking about it. But but we also have to not just be isolationists. We also have to recognize an obligation to other people to help them with their democracy. Right. And 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 you know, the Arab Spring running afoul in Egypt is is I think uh, demoralized enough people to think what's well, not possible. We have still have to remember what's possible. We still have to. I still have to look for the hope and look for the optimism. I find hope and optimism in what Bradley Manning and Edward Snowden yeah. did and what The Guardian is doing right now. Um, you know, I, I, and I think it has to be a reminder to our leaders that their first obligation is to protect freedom. But, uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I like mm -hmm. that. But that, but, and, and, and that's why uh, maybe, you know, maybe uh, 200 years is all, all you can expect from a republic. I don't think so. But, um, but that's why... Uh, we need to stand up as a, as that you know city on the hill, the bright shining light uh, of of uh, hope for people, and um, and we need to stand up for those principles that made this country great. I I'm uh, I'm a patriot, um, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean become a surveillance state. That's that's exactly no. the wrong direction to go. Well, you know I don't blame the spies. I, I wrote about this in my post today. I They're just this. trying to keep us safe. I understand. Cats cats must kill. Spies must spy. You know, there's an, there's an and instinct, and we and we send them off. It is I would up even to give them credit. Leaders. I would even give them credit to say that they are patriots. They are trying to protect us. Yes, yes, yes. A, a soldier has to, is sent off and doesn't have a choice in what war they fight in, and go and follow orders. And the spy is the same. I put the 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 responsibility solely on the politicians, and then in turn on us for choosing them and not holding them accountable. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep, we're the voters. It's our job. It's our government. And I, what I really uh, makes me sad is when people say, ah, "I see, you just can't do anything. Government sucks. Yes, They're all right. politicians. I'm just going to opt out." That's not how you fix this. Opting no. out is the wrong way to go. <laughs> as uh, as somebody in the chat room said, "Give me liberty or give me I don't know something." <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, there is a lot to talk about. I tell you what, let's take a break. I want to get your uh, so the Moto X is out for uh, uh, you. I'm sorry to see. I'm curious if you even are considering an iPhone. I know all three of us probably had iPhones at one point. Uh, I am still a Moto X lover. I'm a lover, not a fighter. I'm really <laughs> loving this. Uh, and this, in fact, I decided is the phone I'm going to take with me on my trip. Uh, and I have them all, as you well know. Um, so, uh, but uh, you know what? When a Nexus 5 comes out, unlike you, Jeff, I will buy it no matter what. I have to own them all. So 
So I don't look uh, to the future as you do. I, you know, I, I just use what's best right now. Um, so we got an HTC One, we got a Nexus Four, and we got a Moto X, and we don't got no iPhones. So let's talk about the new iPhone. If anybody's tempted, but first a word from our friends at LegalZoom. Dot com. They're not a law firm, despite the name. You might say, oh, that, you know, that's a $350 an hour white shoot attorney firm, right? No, LegalZoom is, uh, I love LegalZoom because the idea is that a lot of the legal work you need can be done. You can do it yourself with the right direction, and that's what LegalZoom does. They give you uh, a way to get uh, the documents you need under your direction. It's, it, it's something that uh, fosters uh, uh, entrepreneurship, for instance. When I first started Twit, you know, I asked my friend Kevin Rose, who started many companies, I said, do I, do I need, what should I do, what paperwork? He said, get an LLC. I said, oh, all right. He said, you got to have that, protects your liability, it's easy to do, it's not expensive. LegalZoom.com, $99, in fact. You walk through questionnaire, it was very easy. Uh, in fact, we're still using the operating agreement that I created through LegalZoom.com. That's how good it is. Uh, so nice to feel like that's one of the things that's so great about this country. You can do this yourself. And LegalZoom makes it easy. You can also set a, get a trademark. You can a Chapter S or Chapter C Corp if you'd prefer. Uh, by the way, for your family, last will and testament, $69. And the other thing is now, and this is new, LegalZoom has, does have attorneys. They have a legal plan. They've vetted attorneys in almost every state. They've got profiles online and unedited uh, reviews from users. So you could pick the guy who's right or gal who's right for you at a fixed rate. You know exactly what you're going to pay. Form an LLC. Get a DBA. Incorporate. Form a nonprofit. Ninety-nine bucks. You'll also save money on wills, trusts, and more. I want you to visit LegalZoom.com. Find out why in the past 12 years over a million business owners have trusted them to start their businesses. This, to me, this, this is why we live in this country. It's, it's so easy to do this. You don't have to bribe anybody. <laughs> Just go to LegalZoom.com. To get a special thank you for using LegalZoom through Twit, make sure you enter the offer code TWIG, T-W-I-G, in the referral box at checkout. You'll get 10 bucks off. LegalZoom.com. Use our offer code TWIG. And uh, we thank them for their support. I've been thinking a little bit about, I was in Egypt in 2009. And uh, it was not, of course, this is before the Arab Spring, but I was thinking... I, there were two lessons I really gained out of that visit. First of all, I knew that they were in trouble because the population was growing. I think it was a million and a half people every other month. And uh, because Egypt doesn't have uh, arable land, it's just on the, on the Nile, the rest of it's sand, they all came to Cairo. And when a city is growing by a million people every other month, something's got to give, right? But the other thing that was a great lesson to me, and I came home really appreciating the United States, where we live by the rule of law. You know, we... We have these discussions and we get angry at the NSA, and so, but we live by the rule of law. And I remember talking with people in Egypt and yeah, if you want to, uh, you know, do something, you had to go bribe somebody. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there was, it was, a, it felt chaotic. It felt like if you knew somebody or you had the money to bribe somebody, you could get stuff done there. But if you didn't, you were out of luck. Half the house, most of the houses in Cairo are unfinished because the law is that when you finish a house, that's when you start paying taxes. So nobody finished their house. And there was this great sense of, eh, we don't care. Everybody's in it for himself. And that really, when I came home, I realized how powerful it is that in this country, you can sue somebody and the judge's decision stands. And you don't go out and shoot them in most cases. You go, okay, I guess I lost. Um, for all the complaints we make, um, y y this is a, pretty remarkable country we live in and uh and the uh the rule of law is so important it's absolutely true i mean there's lots of problems with the system but we're empowered it's it's it's, it's a system designed for us to be able to change exactly. it exactly and that's why these right? discussions are so great yep and nobody yep. has yet come pounding on my door saying you better shut up about the nsa mm -hmm. now if i were at johns mm -hmm. hopkins university they might but that's a well yes <laughs> that isn't that shameful it really is. And now there's been an apology. They backed uh, down. They backed down. But the fact that a university would not support free speech is appalling. I missed this. What happened? So there's a very well-known crypt, uh, crypto expert. Um, I'm going to get to his uh, blog post. He, he's a professor at, at Johns Hopkins. 
Um, and uh, his name is Matthew Green. And he has a blog on Blogspot, but he also uh, mirrors it to a site at JHU. And uh, he wrote a scathing blog post about this whole NSA stuff in which he said, for instance, I was totally unprepared for today's bombshell revelations describing the NSA's effort to defeat encryption. Not only does the worst possible hypothetical I discussed in previous years appear to be true, it's true on a scale I couldn't even imagine. He was worried when he was talking about it in the past that he'd be considered a crank. He says, I'm no longer the crank. I wasn't even close to cranky enough. The academic dean contacted him and said, take down all posts of that blog. And the NSA logo. even The NSA logo was on it. Yes, he made him take that down as well. Now, the reason this is a big deal is because there is this tradition in universities of, <laughs> of open expression, of freedom of speech. Yeah. Not just universities, by the way, but but well, yes. But, but especially, in particularly in universities, right. it's important. Especially in those environments, yes. Um, so the question was, why was the administration uh, asking for this? Turns out uh, that uh, Johns Hopkins has a... Uh, let me see if I can uh, find the... Uh, there's a part of Johns Hopkins that does business with the NSA. <gasps> And it's unclear at this point what the chain of requests were. The Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab, whose motto is Enhancing National Security Through Science and Technology, apparently went to the academic dean. Somebody, we don't know who at the APL, went to the academic dean and said, uh, you, these are classified documents you're linking to. It wasn't by the... well. Okay, well, this is an interesting point. Well, right. It Are was, they classified now that everyone's It was them? the Washington Post uh, po uh, articles, public articles. But in fact, and we had this discussion on security now, they are technically, they are still classified. Which right, and so government people are told not to read them. Not to read them. He was thinking to them, but yeah. he's not a government person. He's a professor. Right. Uh, so the dean of the engineering school, his boss, asked him to take down the post and to stop using the NSA logo. And he made a point of saying it wasn't the dean's fault. So he also else. said, "I should look. I should get a lawyer if I didn't take it down." Yeah. Um, wow. They have since issued an apology. Not exactly. They said he could put it back up. <laughs> <laughs> They're not saying what happened. Johns Hopkins told Ars Technica, "We didn't receive any inquiry from the federal government about the blog or any request from the government to take down the mirror site." As to where the information came from, we are still tracing the path of this event. Like, well, I don't know. Somebody told me to tell him that. Unbelievable. Wow. And shameful. And they did back down. They said, but anyway, Matthew Green is a very smart and good guy, and his articles, his blog posts are very good, and I recommend you read them. Uh, they're f the full posts are on uh, Blogger. Uh, Google didn't ask him to take it down. <laughs> yeah, and he also, by the way, he wrote another post today. His, his, he, he said he and his wife talked about it, and he has this short window of fame where people are coming to it, so he used that good. to make the point, and a very good post saying that we have to restore, the question is, rather, how do we restore faith in technology? Yeah, because that's the really the big, uh, to me, the big... Uh, detriment of all of this. Well, there's a number of them. But one of the big detriments of all of this is nobody trusts anything. When Apple announced this fingerprint reader, the first thought everybody had is, oh, yeah, that probably sends it all, your fingerprints off to the NSA, doesn't it? But it doesn't. Right? It does. it well, Apple says it doesn't. Apple says it doesn't, right? Now, now does consumers, you know, I was talking about this with Kevin. Apple says that it's stored locally, right? And it's just used to unlock it's your device. It's hashed and, and your, stored and locally. It's hashed and stored locally, and it unlocks your iTunes account. But do we... Do we trust, first of all, do consumers get that difference no. that it's not sent no. to the internet? Do we know for sure that it's not sent to the internet? Do we know for sure that there isn't some sort of a, that there won't be in the future some sort of vulnerability on the device or in the operating system or right. some sort of hole that a malicious app could take advantage of in order to transmit that information the way that the uh, your location information was, tran was transmitted from your account? Yeah, the there is a that... slide in those NSA presentations that say, oh, by the way, if you want to know where the perp's been for the last six months, this thing on the Apple iPhone phone is stored and you can just get that 
Yeah, here's the file name and the location <laughs> of the device. Just so we know that. that they're aware of these things. This is exactly the kind of thing the NSA specializes in collecting. Yeah. I believe Apple, when it says we're not doing this, but that's yeah, the really point do. of this is you can no longer trust. You feel like trust. I can't trust anybody. Right. And if you're not a U.S., if you're not in the U.S. If you're in an airport. In a, in oh, a that's zone, another story. Okay. Would David Miranda have been, have been physically forced to put his finger on his phone? I, I am leaving the country, uh, as you know, and I'll be coming back October 7th. And we are now learning that it is the Border and Customs uh, maintains a list of people for law enforcement in the U.S. that they want to seize their stuff. And because it, you're crossing into the United States, they don't need any warrant or anything. You just need to be on a list, and they'll take all your electronics. And then they analyze them for bad stuff. So, God are you taking inventory America. of everything that you've said and done, Leo? <laughs> I'm thinking maybe. Uh, I, you know, there's nothing on my stuff that I'm worried about, but I don't want to lose my computer, my phone, all my stuff. Yeah. And if and you don't know if you're on a list. This you is, have no recourse when it happens. And there's no recourse. It's a lawless zone, literally a lawless zone. Now the thing. Let's go back to the fingerprint real quickly. I don't know about uh, New York State, but in California. We get fingerprinted when we get a license. Really? Oh yeah, and that and and that database is unencrypted and shared. I am sure with law enforcement. So I'm not worried about iPhones. <laughs> they already have all my fingerprints anyway. Yeah, I mean, when I, I'm I'm in the process of adopting legally adopting my daughter, and I was they did a full background check, and I was fingerprinted during that process all the time. as well. All the time. Uh, passports, yeah. arrests, obviously. But yeah. these are the things that I associate with getting fingerprinted for, right? <laughs> background checks, arrests, passports, right. well, driver's license. You know, so how about this anyway, one in Disneyland? You know. If you get one of those passes uh, that you can go over, they fingerprint you. And that's how oh, you... Really? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. One of the, like, fast passes? Yeah, then oh, they use the good. fingerprint as your way to get through the styles. Right. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. Yeah. One of the greatest things I ever did was, was sign up for global entry uh, so that if we were in the airport at the same time, Leo, you were standing along the line. Right. I'm zipping right past you, and my fingerprints go on the machine, and I come in. Yeah. And your do they do biometrics of your eye? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yep. Well, I'm not sure. Actually, I'm not, I take it back. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's. Good. I did an iris take scan. A picture of you. I did an, I, No, no, I did an iris scan for clear. Remember that? Right. Clear, oh, where yeah, you could clear. jump ahead. Where you get fingerprinted, iris scanned. Now I realize the whole thing. <laughs> you got no secrets. No. I'm surprised yeah, they don't take a little hank of your hair. A strand of hair, and then like, yeah. you run the DNA test. Yeah. yeah. Well, except you know, the, 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 here here's the thing. One, I wrote another piece for the Guardian arguing that what's people say that privacy is dead, but what I say is that secrecy is dying. And, and that the lesson of Snowden, Manning, Greenwald, Guardian, and all that is, and, and Clay Shirky says this better than I, than I can, as like with many things, um, a secret is only as safe as its least trusted holder. And what the government has to learn is that it can't hold secrets like this from us. And that's the, the hope I find in this story. So when the encryption story came out, I said, hallelujah, we know about this yeah. now. And there's no stopping us. Yeah, at least we are having the conversation. It does make mm -hmm. you wonder, though, how much we don't know. Oh. Well, and so so that is the real chilling effect of this is, do people even trust technology anymore? And do people outside the U.S. trust U.S. technology anymore? We are going to see annual reports coming out from the likes of Cisco and Google and who knows who else blaming the NSA for some portion of lost revenue. To international clients, it's got to be huge. Yeah, I mean, our own our own government said, "Don't buy phones from Huawei and ZTE," because the, the Chinese military are owners of these companies or part owners of these companies. Well, if I were Chinese, I sure as hell wouldn't buy an iPhone. What goes around? <laughs> so yeah. here's here's the story from the New York Times: newly released documents reveal the government uses border crossings to seize and examine travelers' electronic devices instead of obtaining those. Difficult to obtain search warrants. There's there's such a pain, aren't they? Search warrants. Uh, <laughs> this is completely legal. The government can subvert our constitutional protections against unreasonable search and seizure merely because we're crossing the border. Americans crossing the border are being searched. Their digital media is being seized in the hopes, in the hopes that the government will find something to have them convicted. 
Um, and of course, anyone of any sense, terrorist or criminal, <laughs> is not going to be bringing things across the border. They already know better anyway. This is these are fishing expeditions. Yes, they're harassment. It's yeah. In the case of David that, Miranda, it was, it was intimidation theater. It's intimidation. So TEX, T-E-C-S, is this computer system used to screen travelers at the border. Includes records from law enforcement, immigration, and anti-terrorism databases. A, a report from the DHS about border searches of electronic devices says a traveler may be searched because he is a subject of or person of interest in an ongoing law enforcement investigation and flagged by law enforcement lookout in the Immigration Customs Enforcement Computer System, Tex. Um, and if you are, they're just going to take your stuff. Be Expect to be harassed, questioned, and they'll take your stuff. You see, what you happened, too, though, is that when David Miranda came across, he had to give up his... They made him... They said, you're going to jail if you don't give us your passwords. So even if you have a Chromebook, a lovely pixel like mine, that uh, in which all my data is in the cloud and it's not local, uh, and you know you've got to sign on the machine. Uh, I they in, in the UK they threatened him with jail, saying hand over your passwords, bud. Right. You you might say this doesn't ever happen. According to uh, records from uh, the Customs and Border Protection, it happens 15 times a day. Jeez. Over the last wow. over the last year. Uh, about 930,000 people are screened daily by border agents. 4,957 of them uh, were subjected to what they call electronic media searches. They go through your laptop, your phone. They look at stuff. And this came up uh, because a fundraiser for a young guy who was raising money to defend uh, Private Manning, um, David House, uh, he was on a list because he was doing that. And so he, they took all his stuff. He says, I can't make a living. Like On 26, months, they I took think. my computer for seven months. I can't make a living. After seizing his devices, immigration authorities sent a copy of Mr. House's data to the Army Criminal Investigation Command. He was not accused of any crime. I want to point this out. He was a person of interest because he was raising money to uh, for Ch Bradley Manning's defense. For, some, for someone to put up a constitutionally protected defense... In a court of law. He came back into the country from Mexico. They seized his, seized his laptop, camera, thumb drive, and cell phone and kept it for seven months. No evidence of any crime was found. Isn't that nice? Doesn't it make you look forward to your vacation? I, I don't know what to bring. I don't think I'm on any lists. But if you can get on a list because you tried to raise money for a legal defense fund... Then I suppose I could be on a list. Yeah, yeah I was gonna chilling. say you 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 promoted the EFF. I mean, there there's uh -huh. I mean, there's plenty of things that you said here on the air, Cleo, that he could be considered. Oh, you I mean, you're gonna be fine. It's just that. Well, yeah, I'll let you. Uh, it'd be great. It's a Brooklyn. great story if they keep my computer and phone. I guess I will be getting that Nexus Five. And, and the great thing with the Leo Port is <laughs> that's okay. I got two hundred more. But yeah, I got plenty more at home. Take I'm everything you class. want. Take you want. <laughs> Well, and uh, of course, I don't take any um, anything out of the house that isn't in strong encrypted. So I've got strong encryption on my phone. I got strong encryption on the laptop. The next question is, well, are they going to then demand the keys? That's the thing. You'll be only more suspicious because you have the encryption. Right, the PGP problem. Yep. Well, that's another thing. I have I have uh, regular encrypted email con conversations with people all over the world mm -hmm. daily. <laughs> Of course, he's talking about where to find good pizza. It's the but. most trivial crap you ever... Most of it is, does my PGP key work? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Good job. Occasionally, we'll make a snide comment about the NSA. Not yet illegal. I hope. <laughs> so, I hope you watched uh, this earlier today, our uh, Security Now, if you didn't download it. Steve uh, debunks this notion that... Uh, all encryption is broken by the NSA. There is no safe encryption, blah, blah, blah. It gave um, me, when that story came out, it, it, Steve was already out. It, it, Steve's not on Twitter that much, but he was out on Twitter very quickly saying, it's okay, and you go read this, right. and, and it was good to see. It was, yeah. it was uh, reassuring. Calming, yes. Um, a lot, unfortunately, uh, when it comes to technical subjects, uh, mainstream media doesn't do a very good job either of understanding it or explaining it. And, unfortunately, there's this tendency towards sensationalistic Headlines like, from the New York Times, NSA able to foil basic safeguards of privacy on the web. 
The ages... they can do it, it's not through technology, it's through other kinds of... Well, this is what the Human article management. said, which is completely wrong. The agency has circumvented or cracked much of the encryption or digital scrambling that guards global commerce and banking systems, protects sensitive data like trade secrets and medical records, and automatically secures the emails, web searches, internet chats, and phone calls of Americans and others around the world the documents show. They did not show that. The, uh, now, so they were saying, the Times is saying that they've broken, they've cracked HTTPS, right? They that have was not. my understanding. Right. That, that's what the Times was saying. Right. But that the, is not how true. How do we know they have not? Uh, How do we know because of strong not? encryption. Because, as uh, Bruce Schneier says, trust the math. Uh, so Bruce, Bruce has seen all the documents. Uh, yes, he's uh, seen the uh, documents. In fact, I made that connection and, it, right. and introduced him to The Guardian. Right. And um, uh, oh, good. he worked with Greenwald. Good Thank you. you. And, good, Jeff. Thank um, you. Yeah. Because uh, uh, Bruce knows his stuff. So, and uh, it's, so I, I, when he looks at the stuff and says, "Don't worry, folks. Here's the status of it." I have, you know, he right. when he and Steve both do that gives me a lot of faith. What, so, what we what seems to be true is that the NSA has a fairly large budget, about two hundred fifty million dollars a year. Uh, and and by the way, all law enforcement has always been very nervous about the idea that a lot of the net is dark, that they can't see into encrypted stuff. And they're so, only making them. It's a Streisand effect of encryption. I know. They're, all, they're only going to make more things Push, encrypted. They're now. pushing us under underground here. Um, so they have about a quarter of a billion dollars dedicated to somehow cir circumventing this. But most of it is probably uh, planting moles in big companies, finding existing holes. Uh, in fact, the only thing that they cracked, they did two things. They, they were able to crack broken stuff. They know that stuff's broken. When we talk about it on Security Now all the time. So if you listen to Security Now, you know too and, and don't use it. Things like, you know, WEP. Um, and then they also, apparently, about seven years ago, uh, it, uh, persuaded NIST, the National Institutes of Standard and Technology, to uh, release a completely broken, <laughs> 1,000 times slower random number generator that they had a backdoor into. Nobody uses it because it's so bad. Um, but they're trying. And I think that is certainly the takeaway. They're trying. Well, and, and Leo, what about what about uh, uh, not open encryption, but 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 proprietary? Well, that's the issue. Encryption. Yeah, that's the issue, right? So that's you can look at TrueCrypt, and I can't, and you can't, but somebody who knows Gina probably could. Somebody who understands code could look at TrueCrypt and say, no, no, this is clean code. If you compile it from the original source code, you are guaranteed there's no backdoor. You can't do the same with Apple's File Vault, Microsoft's BitLocker, any blo binary blob that you get from a company. So if you presume that Apple's been subverted or Microsoft or Google's been subverted, then you can. There's no way of vetting it. There's no way of saying, "Well, I don't know. Is it?" And, and subversion is the right is the right verb here. My my big fear in this story. I have no basis for this yet, but my big fear, and, and Bruce talked about it when he was on, is that that. There may be something going on in one of these companies that the companies don't know about. Right. Right. This is right. this whole, uh, unfortunately, this uh, you know this kind of paranoid cloud now that's over all 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 our technology. And and the argument from people I know at Google, for instance, and, and elsewhere is, well, whoa, no, you know, there's enough of us who know what's going on. We would know it. We don't know anything. If we did know it, by God, you'd hear it. And, and and on that level, I absolutely trust that statement. But I don't I don't know enough to know what could be done by one person with security clearance right. who can't tell their boss what they're doing at a lower level in these companies. And but there are lots of people I, with security clearance. So I companies. I have always said, and I and actually I finally converted Steve on this one. Use open source <laughs> encryption, uh, and 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 you're okay. You know, um, if you're if you're really worried. Use an open source compiler, compile everything from source, and uh, and you're fine. You're not what about brute force, though, Leo? Is, is computing get to the point where, for the lower numbers of, of PGP, brute force could do something? For the low, yes, for the lower uh, uh, bit keys, like a 1024 bit key, right. yeah, absolutely. Uh, even probably uh, 2048 is probably. So that's a race. That, that's a, that's a race. Of, of, of how powerful the computers are that yeah. we don't know. If about. they really wanted to get it, uh, they possibly. And, and by the way, the weak link is not uh, uh, the the key length. The weak link is your password. So mm -hmm. if you have a crappy password, I mean that's the that's the front door. 
And most passwords are crappier than we know. I mean, we, you know, this is hackers do us a great disservice by publishing this information about how easy it is to crack passwords. So if so, you so have a very good password and then use long bit keys. You know, four thousand. I use a four thousand ninety six key uh, bit key on my uh, and that that's going to be good for nobody's for a few cracking decades. your pizza recommendations. Man. <laughs> exactly. <Nobody's good. laughs> exactly. Um, well, there's a Google, there's a story in the rundown uh, under the Google section that, that a Google executive today said passwords are dead. Yeah, I was going to say, not only use a good password, but use anything you can in addition to or on top of passwords, That's right? Like to, to yeah. step off. Yeah. To step off, yeah. Yeah, in fact, yeah. we're even getting smarter about uh, to step off because uh, things like Google Authenticator are uh, subject to man-in-the-middle attacks. There are attacks on that. And now that we know that our government is is working really hard to attack this stuff, you know, not just hackers, but the NSA is working really hard to attack this stuff. It's prudent to use stronger stuff. For instance, I just got from YubiKey. This is a good use for NFC, by the way. I got a YubiKey has an NFC chip in it. That so I have YubiKey makes a Google uh, uses the same oath standard that uh, Google Authenticator uses. But unlike Google Authenticator, when I launch Google Authenticator, it just shows the keys, right? So I've started to use the YubiKey Authenticator, which doesn't show the keys until you tap it against your YubiKey and the NFC oh, unlocks nice. it. So mm -hmm. it's not three-factor. It's just double two-factor. Double two-factor. <laughs> yeah. Just make it as hard you know, as if, possible. If, if the government gets your phone in the airport... Doesn't that take away no, with all the they other can, things they can do? Unless they get me... Well, I'm doing something somewhat less secure, I have to admit. So um, one of the things that I like about the Moto X is this ability to stay unlocked when you're within range of a trusted Bluetooth source. And they also have right. these skips, these Motorola skip keys. So I have, for instance, an NFC chip right here on the table. And when I put the phone on it, it just stays unlocked. Now that's kind of a weakness. <laughs> But what it does let me do is use a stronger passcode. Now, instead of using a gesture, which is not very secure, I use a long passcode because I don't have to enter it very often. And I encrypt my SSD on the phone. So if they didn't, ha if, if the phone were locked, as it is now, and they don't have the passcode, they, they can't suck any data off of this phone even by bypassing. Once they do, if they do have the passcode, if they do, if you're sloppy about well, that. Well, then they then beat me with the, if they beat me with a rubber hose and I give them the passcode. Well, and two, then two step is meaningless because the second step right. is now broken. Right. Okay. No, that's not true. Oh, okay. That's what I'm asking. That's not true. They, just because they get access to this phone doesn't mean they then get access to my Google accounts. Because I right. still have two step. If they have my keychain though, my YubiKey's on that, so. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we always say if they have physical access to your stuff it's very hard to protect you right this is what i'm trying to figure out yeah. somebody put up a funny picture of a, of, a, of a guy supposedly sleeping and the daughter breaks the uh the, the the finger print thing by putting his finger on the phone and she's laughing right um but in the one hand you think that the physical is better but on the other hand uh, as you said earlier our, our fingerprints are everywhere you can you can get around that I don't know what the I don't I don't I don't know where the solution goes. Right. So let me let's uh, okay let's get we, we have fun with this but uh, let's talk about something shiny okay because uh, I don't want to depress everybody. iPhones the new iPhones are here. Woo. Woo. They come in color gold and space gray and white. Oh yawn. <laughs> <laughs> don't you want an iPhone a fingerprint sensor? Don't you like that? You know, I think it's a bad sign that both Motorola and Apple think that adding color is innovation these days. I think it's a very bad sign for innovation in phones. Well, what may have happened is we might have just, you know, innovated our way into the corner here. Like, yeah, I think so. We, like they do, it's the same thing happened with word processors, right? You really couldn't improve on, you know, WordPerfect 5. But a, you know, Microsoft just added 20, 20 more features. <laughs> right. Yeah. You just add stuff you don't need and, oh, you got to have the new right. one. We got the ribbon. That's what we got. Yeah, we got the ribbon. So this is the equivalent of that, or fins on a yeah, Cadillac. It it's just because you can't, there's not much more you can do. Although I would argue that a fingerprint sensor is, is innovative. 
Yeah, I, that's, oh, no, that's the one bit that is innovative, right? I, I want to know if that fingerprint sensor is going to work better than, say, face unlock. Here's yeah, why I think I, it am does. Am I really going to be able to pick up my phone and just tap the home button, and right. it's going to unlock without me having to think about it? Because I am lazy, and I don't right. want to put in the passcode every time. I don't love the idea of Apple like ma mass marketing fingerprinting devices, <laughs> but at the same time, I'm lazy, and, and I see the value in just being able to tap the phone and have it unlock from me versus someone for someone it's else. It's not the first time. I mean, the Atrix had a fingerprint reader, but it was just unreliable. Yeah, so, this is the thing. It, Apple had to have, has to have made a very I think reliable. This is reliable. And, and, I, and, I, and I tend to think, based on their track record, although maybe this isn't true for all the things that they shipped, but that they got it right. Um, I there's think a good th chance that they got it right. I think there is. I, they don't release products unless they feel, at least it, here, historically, the, who knows what the new Apple is, but the, you know, historically. With the exception of Bubble Me and iCloud, with a few software maps service, and, you know, but, 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 but hardware-wise, right? Yeah, like and the Cube and yeah. <laughs> 20th Century <laughs> Mac. No, you can, anyway, they make mistakes. Nobody's perfect, but you're right. I think in general, there's an attention to detail. And here's where I think that, this is, to me, the proof is in the pudding. It isn't just for unlocking the phone. Apple has said, we will allow you to buy stuff on the uh, Apple stores with this. Yeah, because no one wants to type their password in, right? But that's it's huge because that's Apple saying, we trust this enough to let it do you, so you can use it for money. Right. For stuff that costs. That is very big because, uh, and, and I think now we're going to wait and see. And uh, if it works, Apple's going to wait and see. If it works and it works reliably, people like it, they'll give out an API. And this could end up being the authentication tool of choice because it'll have hundreds of millions of people will have it in the next few years. So that's, to me, this is what's innovative. Uh, and I do think it works, or Apple would not say you could buy stuff on the store with it. Right. They could lose a lot of money. Yeah, yeah and a lot of trust. And a lot mm -hmm. of trust. A lot of customers. They put their yeah, money I mean, where their gonna... thumbs are. I mean, I think there really is a big statement. Had they said merely, oh, it'll unlock the phone, I would say, yeah, I guess it doesn't work that well. Right, right. I'm interested to see what their app revenue, what their sales revenue is going to look like after this gets deployed because it'll be just so much easier to impulse buy, you know, in-app purchases and apps by not having to <laughs> type in your password. I know this makes me sound so lazy, but when that password pop up, pop, pops up, if it's not something I really want, I'm like, yeah, I'll do it later. Yeah. But if I just have to tap it with my finger. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I that the fingerprint I buy scanners, stuff all the time in Play. And Google it, lets me buy it. And yeah, Google has a setting right that says, do you want us to uh, make it so you don't have to enter the password? And you can say that. Yeah. Yeah, Google's much more lenient than Apple is. Apple, you have to enter your password every time you buy something. Mm -hmm. um, so you're right. And, that's and, a good point. Play, Google just allows it to happen. Huh. I buy off the web a lot on Play as well. Well, come to think of it, Amazon lets me click on my browser. Yeah, one yeah. click. Yep. Mm -hmm. But that's yeah, more so on me. I don't me. know that it's going to make any big difference. Well, I think that's more on me. That's like... Well, if you turn this on and you buy something, that's and somebody and your kid buys something, that's your problem. Apple's saying, I mean, I think with by putting it, by saying we're going to trust the fingerprint reader, it's kind of on them saying we trusted our technology. I think uh, it's a little different. I mean, what, what I'm trying to say is, I, I think it's cool. I think it is in advance. All that's true. It's not a selling point. It's not. No. The mm -hmm. average Joe's not going to say, "Oh, hey, that's great." No, I could put my thumb on there. I mean, iOS seven is really the thing that's like very different here that's right the, to me that's the you have any that's the ugliest any, thing i ever saw in my oh life. My. Ah. johnny i've uh, i think we always think of him because of all these uh, very subtle gray beige aluminum designs for him. but i think johnny secretly loves color he's the guy i brought in the color imax yes mm -hmm. he loves bright colors i think ios 7 is disgusting <laughs> <laughs> It's a, it's a tremendous change. I think people are going to freak I, out. I haven't played with it, so I don't know. Can you change the color palette so it's not so candy, cotton candy? <laughs> I haven't I haven't tried that. I haven't tried to change it. I've been running the betas, uh, you know, because I'm a developer, because I have right. that my iOS app. What do you and, think? Um, do you like it? Uh, you know, I don't live with iOS. It's not my primary. I live with Android, really, and I use iOS only when I'm developing and testing. Um, it, <sighs> I don't love it. I'll be honest. I I miss it. I miss the old. I miss the old design. I miss the, the I miss the depth. I miss the curves to the buttons. Buttons looked a lot more like buttons in the old one. Uh, everything is just flat and this certain kind of you know the typography, uh, the the colors, the icons. I, I don't love the flat design. I I think I'm gonna get used to it because you know you do. I do like after, flat design. Over time. But Google's gone that way too. You know they flatten their logos. There's yeah, no more bezels, yeah, no more mm -hmm. 3D. I like flat. I'm not against flat. I just don't like the color scheme. 
the you know, at the <laughs> just, bottom of the, the rundown. Color screen. It's just color too screen. freaking bright for me. <laughs> one of my one of my number of candidates. Is, go ahead and take it. Is nine things that the new phones look like on, from from uh, Buzzfeed. <laughs> go, go take a look at them. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Cheese grater. No. Okay. One. <laughs> Uh, they look like Daleks. They do those dots. By the way, Apple. By the way, that image doesn't show it, but the uh, the word iPhone shows through one of those dots partially, and it's hideous. Ooh, Steve Jobs ooh. would never. I got. I know. I hate it when people say never. Oh, you're right. They do look like Crocs. Oh my they look god. Like Crocs. Oh, that's my favorite. Oh one. my god, the they one. do. <gasps> Wait, are those, are the those ugliest, ugliest shoes, shoes ever? ever. Yeah, that's the cover Apple's selling. The dot cover. Gotcha. They look like candy buttons. They There's look like cheese a cheese grater. grater. They look like a children's calculator. They look like a baby toy. That Connect Four is what Connect Sarah four. Lane said, and that's ex now th that's the cover. Without the cover, they look more like sweet tarts. <laughs> 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 and Nokia, I love Nokia's response on their Twitter: "Imitation is the best form of flattery." It's, no, it's not. It's not imitating Nokia. Although Nokia has had no. color phones, but there have been color other things. It's not like oh, Nokia yeah. invented yeah, color. It, it, the H O N does show through one of these holes. Is that hideous this or is what? So weird. I, I, I know. I hate it when people say Steve Jobs would never have let this happen, but Steve Jobs would never have let that happen. <laughs> Seriously. It, it looks like it says none through the hole because the the, the H is kind of cut off. Whoa. Wow. Never okay. would have let that happen with his attention to detail. How did that happen? Very strange. Very strange. Yep. <laughs> I just don't get it. Uh, anyway, I'm going to buy it. And, and meanwhile, the stock is down. Uh, yeah, there's a response. 5.4%. <laughs> this was made by Cheeto down. in our chat room. Cheeto says, Dear Nokia, imitation is the best form of flattery, showing all the color things Apple did long before Nokia did <laughs> color Lumias. Yeah. But you know yeah, what? The color, the color thing leaves me cold. I don't think color uh, seems more like a marketing gimmick than anything else. I think the software changes are uh, are a big deal. I think they're a big change. Well, people are going to freak out. 64 um, bit, do you care that it's a 64 bit ARM architecture? I don't care. I don't think there's any benefit from that. I have to think that Apple engineers are going crazy when uh, Motorola talked about its X8 architecture with the extra chips that stay on, watching what's going on while the main chip is turned off, because it's exactly what Apple's doing with the M7 motion coprocessor. Great minds. That was, I, I'm sure those were independently uh, thought of, but uh, interesting. They're doing the same thing. Yeah. You know, uh, what what did you guys say on on uh, on Mac Break and on Twitter about um what they didn't announce? Uh That's well, they didn't that. announce NFC, which I think is a blow to NFC, but NFC isn't just for commerce. I use NFC as I mentioned for unlocking the yeah. phone. There's lots of ways to use NFC that uh I like NFC. Um why do you think Apple seems to be religiously against it? I they've decided to go their own way. Uh, uh in fact, we talked a little bit about that and uh, was it Annie Anaka who believed that they were going to go the Bluetooth low energy route? That's the technology that's used by the Fitbit and other devices, and pr presumably by an iWatch. Um, what didn't they? What else didn't they do? Well, you know, they, well, there were no, no surprises. No there was yeah, but no yeah, there, yeah, but there, none of this was a surprise. I don't think, you know, the, okay. there was a lot of you know, swirling rumors as there always are, but this is pretty much what I expected from them. I didn't expect them to talk about anything but iPhones. This is the iPhone event. The complaint about some from some analysts is that it's just too expensive for China. It's not gonna. It's not gonna give them scale. Uh, I, yeah, I think uh, I, we and a lot of uh, others got it wrong, thinking that Apple might want to go after that low end market. In hindsight, that's not the Apple way. It never has. Been. You're right. You're right. Right. And uh, so, yeah, that's, I think, one of the reasons the stock market punished them is they thought that mm -hmm. they should have made a $350 phone. Um, but I don't think that Apple cares about that. Yeah. These are high margin items. And uh, what, what is odd to me is I don't really understand what, who the 5C is for. It's not that much cheaper. It's $100 cheaper. And you give up the fingerprint reader. You give up the fast processor. Give up the motion coprocessor. I don't understand why they made that phone. Chris, mm. Brink, you have an idea? Chad, yeah, for I people mean, with red hair. Absolutely, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, feet on the ground, sort of uh, uh, view. 
Um, no, no, no. Uh, the high school market, high school yeah. and college market, this is huge. That's I mean, why we titled our show, uh, Mac Break, last, uh, yesterday, C is for Kids. This is a phone aimed at young people. Absolutely. And and they not don't, third world, not underdeveloped nations, not poor people, young people. If you just look at the Apple website, I mean, um this the, it looks like the iPhone C is for for someone who's much younger and then you look at the the version of the iPhone 5S, it's like this is the old daddy's phone. Yeah, you're right. Like yeah. just look at the yeah. difference. I mean, uh, people in high schools and 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 in the high schools, I actually believe that those are sort of un under sophisticated users, they're not looking for no, the not. newest Android phone that they can hack. Yeah, no. And I the iPhone see. has that sex appeal that they really want. I could see my kids. Uh, in fact, my kids probably will want the C, not the S. Yeah, they don't care about a fingerprint reader Absolutely. or a 64-bit processor. This is for the colorful. That's their tagline. <laughs> the 5C is for the colorful. I'm a colorful person. I want a lime green phone. Yeah, know. it's funny because yesterday I was looking at these and I was thinking, God, maybe I want. A C. Do you? I mean, you're it, a colorful it, person. It really looks. It looks like the the fun phone. It is a fun <laughs> it's, phone. Okay. It's crazy because I feel like I've been brainwashed because I know it's just a f I'm five underneath, but I don't know why. But it feels like the fun phone. Chad, you're Chad. You're right too. And and, and if you're gonna go with color, they go with it more aggressively. You know. So I got my I got my Moto X. I'm not dissing on the Moto X, but I got it and I said. Oh, I got a blue phone. I know. It's not that. Look at mine. I mean, does this jump out at you as a red phone? Not particularly. Of course, I got the brick red. You can get a brighter red. Yeah, but. They call this crimson. That's not crimson. It's pretty. You know, the truth is, these aren't really jazzy items. All right. Well, I guess I guess uh, we've come to the end of our shows. Uh, this is the last episode of All About Android and Twig. There's no new innovation. <laughs> That's you it. know, this morning, I, you know what, Jeff, you're saying that in, in jest, but in this morning, I did start to think a little bit about that, that we have been in a great couple of years, and maybe I didn't appreciate it, where there was just lots of stuff happening. It was very exciting, and we may be entering a period of time, a little bit of a plateau, as we have with personal computing. Desktop computing, there's nothing going on. Yeah, but look at this, look at this show, and I'm going to defend our gig here, but most weeks we say, wow, look at what we got to talk about. We can't believe this. Yeah, but I think that may be changing. Uh, yeah, but uh, maps, self-driving cars. Well, that's kind of what I thought. I said at least there'll always be software on the Internet. That's going to change rapidly. Hardware, we may be at the end of the line. Hardware, hardware. I agree. I, 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 yeah, yeah, and watches are not it. I, no, everybody's yeah, going to be looking for wearable, and I don't think it's glasses or watches. I, I love the idea of wearable. In fact, we're, uh, we're actively considering launching a show about wearables. Because oh. I think that's going to be an exciting area, but it may be early days. The I host has to have very long arms yeah. to put lots of watches on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really want to do a show about mobile and wearables. I really think that's where exciting things are going to happen. And that's one of the things we do is we need to look. You know, I didn't cover cell phones for a long time. Yeah. I hated it. You know, people kept asking me about, you know, well, is the Motorola Razor, is that a good phone? When I went to radio stations, you know, 10 years ago, that's all anybody wanted to talk about because they weren't into computers and the Internet. And I said, I don't care about phones. They're stupid. <laughs> I'm not a gadget guy. I'm a... Who wants to talk on the phone? Email me. Yeah. And now it's where all the excitement is. But I think rapidly, uh, maybe the next... We got to see what the next thing is, right? Yeah, I mean, it does feel like smartphones and tablets are just these slabs of, you know, touchscreen, right? It's very of, basic like, now. Of glass, yeah. right? I mean, and, and there's specs, right? And yet, then once in a while, you have something like the fingerprint reader, which is, is kind of interesting. But And they're all starting to converge upon this sort of... So same design, you know, you know, less bevel. We have colors, which I think is, you know, is sort of meaningless. But yeah, it's true. Even the hardware section of all about Android, don't tell Jason, is probably my least favorite because I'm like, oh yeah, it's another square, it's another right. rectangle. Yeah, they are they're glass, rectangle. they're glass rectangles. Aren't you they? know, Leo, I'm yeah. not sure it's so much wearables or mobile as it is peripherals. That you'll have your computer, right. whatever form that 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 lump is. It's you got your lumpo computer, and then things are going to talk to it and get to the world through it. Well, that's the debate that's going on right now, actually, very actively in tech circles, is should these be standalone or should they be, as they have been so far, with the Galaxy right. Gear and the Pebble, uh, adjuncts, accessories? Well, I'm of the other that's opinion. That's I think they need the to telco. be standalone to be any good, frankly. Yes, but, but the telcos are going to hold us back there because they're, they're going well, to have they, bad plans. Yeah, I agree. You might, be able to, you might carry 10 connected devices. But that's right? the best argument. Camera. For and this and yeah, that, and yeah. they charge you ten to twenty bucks each month for every one of them. Right. It's gonna, it's gonna squash the, the market. The, 
the Bluetooth pairing, that pairing with your phone degrades the, the user experience. I, I agree with Leo. Like if, if I had to design the watch that I really wanted, it would have to be, it would have to be standalone. It would have to be mm -hmm. something that I can just put on and walk away. The fact that I have to pair it, even with glass, it's like, okay, pair it. Okay, they're talking. You need this. Oh, the phone's in the other it's room, uh, whatever. Yeah. It's, it, it really, it degrades the user yeah. experience. No, that's a really, really right point. Yep. And um, something like yeah. Chromecast uh, isn't wearable. Uh, it is kind of an accessory. Yes. I mean, it's a remote. It's a remote device. Um, there, I mean, there's something interesting. That's a good example. I've been there. watching shows yeah. on that a lot, playing music oh, from yeah. it a lot. Love I it. I use it constantly. Yeah, I the pray TV for good... other companies to support it, though. I'm a little disappointed that we. They even said Pandora would, and that hasn't happened. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It hasn't. There was a brief time where on the, my Chromebook it disappeared from Netflix and Play. Yeah. I haven't checked play again recently, but it's back on Netflix. Yeah, I, I watched play uh, yesterday. Watching Orphan Black on the Play Store. It's good. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah but Leo, I don't think you're. I don't think your wearable show. I don't think that the the glass and the gear and the current sort of crop of wearable stuff is no is show worthy just yet. No, I agree. But I bet it will be. I, I do I feel right like that's that the direction. future. I do feel like that's the future, but you're right. It's too early. Well, it also is the precursor to the, to the Internet of Things, and you're just a thing. Yes, it's what it is, really. It's the Internet of Things. So maybe it should be the Things show. <sighs> We're going to take a break. Come back with more. Jeff, Gina, you, Google. Sounds good. Our show today brought to you by Shutterstock.com, a great source for anybody who needs royalty-free photos, uh, videos, illustrations, vector graphics. Shutterstock it now has, actually, that goes up all the time. Uh, that last count, 28 million high-quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips. Visit Shutterstock.com. You've got the image tab. But don't forget to click the uh, video tab, too, because you can see a bunch of beautiful videos from professional artists, photographers, filmmakers all over the world. Shutterstock reviews each one individually for content and quality. So you know everything there is good. But nevertheless, they're doing well over 10,000 new images every single day. So there's always something new. The Shutterstock search engine is a work of art, a thing of beauty, and a joy uh, forever. You just enter in not only nouns, but you can enter in adjectives. Crazy monkeys, for instance, and, and get a variety of images that match that. Then Now what I want you to do is sign up for the free account, which lets you then pick images, shove them into a light box. You can keep that for inspiration or, you know, later use, but you can also share it with clients and colleagues. And this is all free. The full access to all the images, search engine, the light box. If you want to use images on your blog or your videos or your presentations, they've got a number of different ways to do it. Individual image packs, monthly subscription, that's what we have. If you're a publication, the monthly subscription is the best deal. 25 images a day, that's what we get. It's great. Everybody here at the office can use it and it's fabulous. You can download any image in any size. You pay one price. Use it as, as you wish. That's royalty-free. I want. By the way, Shutterstock just partnered with Facebook. You may be using Shutterstock. I don't know if it mentions it, but that's what you're using. If you're an advertising customer on Facebook, uh, you've got all the Shutterstock images with the Facebook ad creation tool, so you can dress up your, your ads. A great resource for local businesses that uh, want professional-looking ads. Try it out today, Shutterstock.com. If you've got an iPad, try their... Webby award-winning iPad app. It's really gorgeous, really beautiful. Multilingual customer support in more than a dozen countries. Full-time customer support throughout the week. Shutterstock.com. Now, when you decide to buy, use our special offer code, TWIG9. Twig and the number nine, all one word. And you'll get 30% off any package. 30%? That's awesome. This is for new accounts. The offer code TWIG9. We thank Shutterstock so much for their support of This Week in Google. Don't forget the nine. That's for the month of September. Shutterstock.com. Are you into MOOCs? I'm into MOOCs. Ah, uh, MOOCs. With a Q? <laughs> M-O-O-C. M-O-O-C, <laughs> right, right, yeah. M-O-O-C. It stands for Massively Online Open courses or massively open online courses oh yes i've heard of these i can't say that i'm into them but i've heard of them oh get into them MOOCs are awesome uh coursera <laughs> and udacity khan academy was one of the first MOOCs. Mm -hmm. oh okay okay uh yeah. google is building a youtube for MOOCs with edx this is a really neat idea mooc m-o-o-c dot org 
Uh, edX is an open source online education nonprofit started by Harvard and MIT. And uh, so M-O-O-C... Dot it org. definitely sounds like a, a racial <laughs> slur, <laughs> but... Hey, you mook! Hey, mook! Get out of my way! <laughs> you mook. <laughs> you mook ya. Oh, it does. You it's not a... You didact you. <laughs> yeah, it's really a crappy uh, acronym, I agree. I agree, but that's it, so it's too late. You have to go with I, it. I didn't realize that they were called, that things like Khan Academy and Code Academy and that kind of thing yeah. uh, were called uh, MOOCs. MOOCs. Now, I'm Khan Academy is nonprofit, as is MOOC.org, but Coursera and Udacity are uh, money-making entities. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be interesting to watch. I like the idea that uh, Google is supporting uh, an open, well, remember, free remember when Apple, App, Apple still has. iTunes U. I do, yeah. Somebody said to me, and I think this is true. We were talking about being locked into Apple's ecosystem. I said, you know, I, I, I can get a, I can get along without it. And he said, you know, the one thing I can't get along without IT, iTunes U. There is wow. nothing comparable to to, to that. And maybe MOOC.org is the solution. The problem with MOOCs, I, I think MOOCs are are, are fascinating, um, but it reminds me of the early day, early days of media. The early days of media, and we're still there to a great extent. Shovelware. Let's take what we yeah. did in the old world and let's just shovel it online. CD-ROMs. So I see the same thing with MOOCs yeah. where we did 15-week lecture courses. We do 15-week lecture courses. And we've got to just utterly rethink how we do outcomes and how we then get to those outcomes. And and, and Khan Academy is far more disruptive to me oh, than a MOOC because Khan Academy deals with individual lessons and pieces of I knowledge. I guess so Khan Academy is not technically a MOOC. Because you're, you're not all in course. one course, right? Okay, that makes sense. You, you make your course out of it, or you're in, right. you're in calculus in school, and you don't and understand. You're getting it, help. You go to a comic right. academy. Right. I think that mm -hmm. that what 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 has the rest of media been about? Unbundling. So we need to unbundle mm -hmm. education. I agree. Now you're going to unbundle it from the university, where you can take courses here, there, and everywhere. And then you're going to unbundle the course into lessons, and then you're going to unbundle the lessons into specific things that you learn better from this way or that way. Oh, they've right. if, if, they've redesigned Khan Academy. Look at that! Oh wow, that's pretty. pretty. It was never the best looking site, but uh, who cares? Because it had all these free courses in every subject possible. They've completely. We got to get Salman Khan on the show. He is. Oh, he's, oh, he's, he's Nobel he's Peace Prize guy. You know, he deserves all the kudos in the world. This is the how to calculate the area of a circle. You know, I've always wondered that. Let's watch all chocolate wafers in the shape of circular discs. The <laughs> diameter, the diameter of each wafer is 16 great. millimeters. What is right. the area? I admit it's candy? not modern. So the candy, they say it's the shape of... That's what's beautiful discs. about it. Didact. You know, it's not using the latest pedagogy. This is pretty much a teacher on a front of a blackboard, right? Blackboard, yeah. Well, you know, I, I was speaking with a bunch of people at NBC News yesterday, and, and I said at one point, the best use of graphics on television news that I have seen in decades was Tim Russert's whiteboard. Right. Right? <laughs> Very simple. Got something across. There were no trumpets. Pardon me, Gina. Um, <laughs> right? It was. It just described something in a way you could understand it. Florida, Florida, Florida. Who could ever forget that? That's right. <laughs> Udacity is teaming up. Udacity is a for-profit MOOC. I just like saying MOOC. I'm sorry. It is I, I know. Just don't say it in Italy. You don't hey, know what's MOOC. Gonna I feel like I should be in Jersey. Audacity teams up with Google and AT&T and other tech giants for a giant MOOC. <laughs> they call it Open Education Alliance. But it's for industry. Student, they want to provide students around the world with curriculum and skills they need to pursue careers in technology. So it's all about getting a, a workforce trained up. Which is not to me. That's, you know, that's fine. That's good. I, can't, I shouldn't say anything. I think that's where it's going to go. Uh, I, I, was at, I was at the Foursquare conference in New York uh, a year ago. And um, Mr. Ning, I'm forgetting his first name, co-founder of Coursera. And, um, oh crap, I'm forgetting his Sebastian name. Sebastian Thrun. Former, no, he's, he's amazing. Former head of New York City Schools, um, Klein. Oh, no. Anyway, I asked him, I said, what's going to happen to the degree? And Klein said, when people, when, when Cisco starts hiring people because they've taken and, and certified they've taken these five online courses because they have the skills that Cisco needs right now, there goes the degree. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We actually have a new sponsor that's going to do online 
certification training. Oh, that's that's a huge area. Isn't that great? It that's huge. Pro TV, I think. And they were inspired by the screensavers, my old show. So it looks there in a garage, and it's too, it's really cute. It's really great. That's well, great, oh, isn't that? Cool. Yeah, this is the unmuddling, Leo, right? You take, and what with Google, I talked about how education was uh, teaching and research and certification and I forget something, and, and, and socialization, right? And you start to unbundle those functions too. Yeah. So certification yeah. is done, you know, in the law field, it's not done by the school, it's done by the bar, right? Right. And, and, and certification becomes separate from education As because there's be. grade inflation and all these other things. As it should be, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, we should talk about Chrome apps. Uh, I have it in the change yeah. log, but I feel like it's a big enough topic that maybe we should talk about separately. Chrome yeah. desktop Okay, apps. let's do this. Let's do the change log. Okay. And then we will drill down on this. I It was my absolute next topic because I think I, I've been waiting for the show so you can explain it to me. Plus there's new Chromebooks. <laughs> okay. So it's a Chrome time here. You may be taking your Chromebook with you to Italy. By the time we're done, you could it. probably do a Chrome show, Leo. You probably could do it at this oh, point. The Chrome ecosystem no. is you know, I already, I already decided not to do a uh, Metro Tiles show, <laughs> so I don't think this is going to happen okay. either. <laughs> but I can tell you what is going to happen: some trumpeters are going to come out of the woodwork and play the change log theme. The Google change log. <laughs> And ladies and gentlemen, here is Gina Trapani with the latest from Google. Google Plus launches embedded posts, which means that you drop a little JavaScript onto any web page uh -huh. and uh, your Google Plus post, along with the ability to plus one and the link attachment and your avatar and all the people who plus one did and the entire comment thread will show up on wow. any, on any website. Don't go too yeah. fast here, Gina. Don't go too fast here. Don't go I'm too go fast. Do me a favor, Chad. Go to any Google Plus post, click on the little arrow on the upper right to embed, and then see what it gives you. It can give you a uh, long Java string, right? Let's see. Let's what, see. It, it, what it gives you, it, it's not like embedding a video. People, mortals will not do this. Uh-oh. I was all excited. Okay. I was all it's excited. A, okay, I got, I got Chad's <laughs> latest post here. Okay, and bed okay. code. So, yeah, cl click on that uh, that down arrow. Okay. Where's the down Find arrow? Find embed. Oh, it's the, the down button. arrow. It's not the share button. Okay. Well, that's the first no, no, mistake. Top right. Should be in the share yeah, button, right. right? And then there's embed, embed post. post. Okay. I see it. Yeah. Then place this tag. Oh, wait a minute. You yeah, got to place the script header. in the header and then, then place this in the body. Oh, forget oh, about that's it. That's an unfortunate implementation error. Isn't Gina, it? correct me if I'm wrong, but they don't even need to do this. You can put script uh, brackets can. anywhere on the page. It's called YouTube. Yes, you can. Well, it's a wonderful company I work with. Why do they do that? Called, I have a product called repost.us, which is really a really wonderful thing that enables articles to become embeddable. Now, in that case, the source, you put one line of, 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 of script onto your source page. That makes everything on your site embeddable, every blog post you do. So even that can be embeddable. This... Nobody's going to do. Nobody. Well, they don't even need yeah, to do it this way. You could just copy and paste the whole thing. You should be able to copy and paste the entire thing no. and drop it anywhere on the page. You should you be able to. call JavaScript anywhere on a page. Doesn't it work? But you can't do this. This won't work. If you, if you, if you put this whole thing in, 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 in my blog, it doesn't work hmm. because you have to have that in the head. No, you don't, though. You shouldn't. That's not the... Uh, didn't, didn't, didn't in your head or just before your closed body tag. Oh, Google. Google, yeah, Google. But Google no, they, no, uh, wait a minute. Now, wait, wait no, well, hold, do it. wait, do no, it. hold on there. Hold on <laughs> there. So, <laughs> just one cotton picking minute. I you did mook. It before the show, you mook. I don't believe uh, my memory of how JavaScript works. I don't think you have to have the only reason you would want to put that at the top there is for loading speed. Optimization, you have, you have loading a, speed. You yeah. have a blo I put well, it, Leo, I went to my WordPress. Site, I put it in there and nothing showed up, honey. Well, let me see. I'm gonna make it. Might be doing some DOM manipulation, Leo. That requires oh, it to look at a certain time. That's could um, be. And and if that is the case, and I believe Jeff, uh, you know, uh, that's a really poor implementation. That's terrible. I could have screwed it up. I could have screwed it no, up. No, it doesn't work. Well, I'm doing it right now. You're right. It doesn't work. If doesn't you could work, drop right? it anywhere on the page, Google wouldn't have put those instructions there, yeah. right? I mean, what? there's, there's, there's right. obviously there's got to be a reason. There's got to be some, some something going on in the JavaScript there that requires it to be someplace. This, this is, this is a classic developer thing. I worked with a company once 
that said, oh, good, we finished all our work, we have an API now. And I said, no, 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 no. With mortals, with media companies, API stands for, I need a developer, that's going to take me a year. Right? Yeah. This is the same problem here. Oh, I got to change my template. Geek wait a minute. Says, no, no, wait oh, a minute, easy. though. It says place it in your head or just before, before close bodies. That means you could be anywhere. Body is the body of the so page. Why does it work? But but it, but if you're if you're dropping this into a WordPress blog post, for example, well, that might not your work. post is in the middle of the page. It's not just before the body close tag. Right. You know? Right. That's exactly I the mean, problem. Really, That's how I should be able to use this. Someone like Jeff has to go in and edit his WordPress theme, right, to put it in the header or just below, right. you know, just before the. And it's not someone like Jeff who tag. does that. It's Jake who does that. Right. <laughs> oh, is Jake your WordPress administrator? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Smart. Smart. I don't even know uh, where it's hosted now. I, I don't know why that, that is the case, but it, it, Google wouldn't have put those instructions if it wasn't the case. Well, what's, well the, the instructions are place this tag either in your head, which is the normal thing when you have script. You like to put it in the head before the body render. Right. Or, or just, just before close. Oh, just before. Just before. before your As close. Gina uh, said, this is a post is in the middle of a whole bunch of stuff. You're right. So let yeah. me... Oh, you're right. Yeah, so they, that's but, but that's for loading, isn't it? No, it's just, well, it won't render. It won't be there. It won't do anything. Google, Google, Google. Now, I also got excited when I saw this news because I thought you could start to embed things on yeah, Google+. Plus. Well, wait a minute. Now, this worked. Wait a minute. All right. Wait. So let me try it. Okay. So uh -oh. I'm doing, I'm, I'm going to, I did follow their instructions, and I put it right before the closed body tag, and then the page did open with the embedded thing just like Great. that okay but let me try moving this script tag up yeah shut up up, up to above. uh should i put it at the top of the body let's but, say right yeah now that would be if you just pasted it in between i could put some here's some text and then here's some text we'll just put some crap mm, in here work in my WordPress. Here. well wordpress may be stripping stuff out WordPress. Oh, it's not WordPress.com. It's my WordPress blog. I can put yeah, it. Yeah. All right. There. So there I'm saving it. This is not following Google's instructions. Live website. Oh, there it is. It, it worked. Oh, no, it did come up. It, it did worked. come up. Why shouldn't this work just like a YouTube? Because oh, WordPress There's a standard is standard for embedding. No, but we're you're not doing HTML. This is a pure HTML doc. The WordPress is but doing that, something. That, with it. People people that, that's what I'm trying to say is people aren't doing that. Oh, right. If they want to get this stuff spread around, people have blogs and they have Stuff like that. And the number of people who are still doing who Jake yells at me when we teach HTML at my school because he says nobody needs HTML anymore. They're using tools like this. What are you doing? Well, but I, I would point out that any, <laughs> yeah, it, it, WordPress is stripping out. Not WordPress.com does. No, 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 WordPress. but no, no, it's well, stripping well, it out. It's, when it's, you have a blog, you're loading JavaScript in the head, you're loading CSS, WordPress is doing some processing. It's got to do a lot of that. Yeah. There's, I still there's go back to why shouldn't this operate like YouTube? It's a Google it No, it does. People news not crazy. It doesn't. It should. It does Jeff not. is right. It sh you should just be able to drop a tags in what you know in one part of the page. I That's mean, how the every the embed works. But no, but YouTube is not a, doing a JavaScript embed. YouTube's, is it? YouTube uses uh, an iframe. It's, it's an using iframe. an iframe. So Repost this is JavaScript. So JavaScript. watch. I'm breaking the rules. I am putting, I'm pasting both snippets together in the middle between text, not at the end, not at the beginning. I'm going to save this out, open it in the browser. And in a bit, it's going to render, and there it is. It does it. So maybe so it's about that WordPress a, is stripping out there. the JavaScript, as it should, because it's worried about exploits. And I agree, yeah, but there's nothing awesome. you can do with that. Uh, Google can't help that if they're going to use JavaScript. That's what's going to happen. I don't. I'm puzzled as to why they gave you the instructions, but I think so. It's not about DOM. It's about loading. I think it's about. I'm sure there's loading. going to be a WordPress short code or plugin in right. a hot minute that's that does need. this for you. Right. Um, but 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 I, I got to say uh, I'm kind of with Jeff here, and that this should this should be as simple as you. This shouldn't be a stupid. Should they do an thing. iframe? Well, the problem with the iframe is that the height of a Google Plus post is variable. So, right. you know, like with YouTube embeds in an iframe, oh, you can you set can. the width and height, right? right? So I think you can do 100%, but I think that, that it gets funky in some browsers. And right. I think when you expand the comments on the Google Plus, the, the, the height the height adjusts dynamically, and that's kind of tough to do in an iframe because then you'd force a scroll bar. I just think it gets a little funky. If they could have done an iframe, I feel like they would have done that. Also, the iframe gets a little funky with SEO as well. Like yeah. it's hard, it's harder, yes. I think, to read the content of the site. Um, 
Well, so I think Google's doing the right thing. I think that it's not an easy thing. And that's probably why they didn't put it in the reshare button, but up in the drop down. Because right. it's like, you got to kind of know saw, what you're doing. If it's yeah. a post that's not shared publicly, it doesn't show the embed opportunity on Google Plus, uh, which is very that's smart. Nice. That's good. That's smart. That's yeah. smart. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. iframes are actually deprecated. It's the absolutely horrible way to do it. Yeah, anything. it's not. It's not a good solution. Well, I, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Just there. Humor me. Go to repost.us. or go go to no go to njnewscommons.repost.us. Humor me. Okay, njnewscommons. That's the same voice he used when he asked me to stop using <laughs> dot Hangouts today. Repost.us. <laughs> okay, Jeff. You understand that nothing that allows you to paste in stuff is going to allow you to paste in JavaScript. That's a security flaw. So you can never do an embed that is using JavaScript and anything like this. You never will be able to. It's a security flaw. They have to sanitize it. Otherwise, you're running an arbitrary script. Right, a CMS you mean, yeah. Yeah, no yeah. CMS is going to let you do what the embed you have to control the HTML, and you have to, and it can't be uh, stripped out. So go ahead. What am I supposed to do here? So pick, uh, just pick a pick a post. Oh, you're saying they're doing it right? Okay, let's see. Apple recipe yeah. roundup. Right, okay. it's the same one I have. Yeah. Click on that. It's going to go to a page that says repost this article on your website. Oh, look at that. This is nice. And it's very nice. This is nice. And there it says WordPress right there. Let me there do my the proper code. Okay, the embed code has been copied. They're doing a div. And they're doing a script source. This is a script. Let's put it yeah. in my uh, let's put it in my new web page that has all sorts of crap in it. All right. <laughs> I'm so gonna make you log into Leoville and, and start posting on Leoville. Yeah, no, I'm, not, I'm just posting. This. I'm doing this locally. So there is a script repost article JavaScript. But by the way, this is when I took it from the arbitrary. I bet you with WordPress, it's doing something else. Yeah. See, it's using embed codes for WordPress. But I mean, it's using I, its WordPress's native. It's Google not using jo it's not using JavaScript on WordPress. That's why. So it's not going to be as pretty on this. Is the the WordPress code it's doesn't very have any. No, it, you know what? It's so pretty on WordPress. What it does is it reads the CSS of the destination site and mimics that's right. that. That no, it's obviously what it's doing, but it's very not. But it's not doing any JavaScript, which means you couldn't do things like comments and stuff like that. So I'm using, if I use the one that's for my site, it is using JavaScript. And so now I have Chad's post and underneath I have all, this is, you know. Oh yeah, so it's- well, You right, have no CSS, so it doesn't know what to do. Yeah, you know, it's, this is blank it's land. Right, it's, un, it's yeah. unstyled. It's but unstyled, it's but if you look you at the embed- log with CSS. If you look at the embed code that it gives people who are using WordPress, Gina, there's no JavaScript. This is, this is just, divs you know css plus right an right, article yeah, link. I, see, I see what you're saying mm -hmm. so of course you couldn't do the 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 javascript thing in wordpress is going to strip it out yeah so, i mean that's why wordpress has like short codes right right that, that, right. that it's using their code you plug in with and short codes. i would have thought google would have thought this through to that extent well then we'd have to do this ugly thing which is not it's ideal not, which is a lot uglier where would you I like to it publish it ranting yeah yeah Right, it, right. You have to have get these choices. Well, interestingly, speaking of Google Plus and WordPress, uh, WordPress.com and what else? Oh, TypePad have Google Plus sign-in integration. And when you when you connect your say your WordPress.com account to Google Plus, then you will show up as the author uh, of your blog post oh, in Google search results. That's yeah, neat. which is which is which is a nice new integration. And actually, yeah. I'd love to the see this in our sponsor Squarespace. Uh, I'd love to see this in Squarespace. I'd love to see this in Tumblr. And it seems like you know it. It's it's an easy way to get your your name and face next to your you know your posts in search results. Is that using the author tag? Yes, Rel that's author. using author tag exactly. Right, right now yeah. it requires you to you know change your theme and and right. or or use. I'm sure there's a plugin out there, but now with, with the sign in with Google Plus, or you don't actually sign into WordPress with Google Plus. You connect your account to Google Plus, and then Google will do that for you, which is a nice integration. So they're they're trying to do they're trying to do the right thing for WordPress users. Uh, but yeah, I agree that embed could be a little a little easier. Continuing uh, on with the change log. Continuing on with the change log. Thank you. Uh, Google Glass. <laughs> you railed <laughs> it. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. I like getting into it. Uh, Google Glass just got an update this week. XE9 brings uh, this new screenshot vignettes feature, which actually superimposes whatever you see in Glass 
onto the picture that you took. So it's a nice way to kind of demonstrate, you know, what you're seeing as you're looking through glass. Uh, YouTube videos and search results, sound search. If you long press and you're listening to a song, Google Google will uh, do a search for for that for that song. And the new update also lets you control the Google Glass UI with the My Glass Android app. So um, that My Glass Android app, you used to be able to see, you know, if someone had glass on and was using it, you could see what was happening actually on your phone. Well, now you can remote control glass that way. So you can hand the phone to someone else, or you can be maybe doing a presentation and say, okay, if I swipe this way, this is what you're going to see on glass and that remote, remote control. Also not uh, go crazy glass. with the finger motions because I just go nutty with it. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I yeah two fingers, I do this. I just, let me just do this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a little easier to do on the phone. Uh, also, I thought something that would make you happy, Jeff. Google Apps. I've already support done it. Too. Very. Have important. you done it? So, so now, is it right that you have to? So you can sign into your Google Apps account on Glass. Is it right that you have to factory reset Glass and then yes. sign in with your Google Apps account, or because it, it doesn't do multiple sign-in, right? You have to do no, one account. No, it does account. not do multiple. Oh God, help me with that would do that drives my Chrome crazy. Um, <laughs> no, which is a whole other rant. Um, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I didn't have the latest version on there, so so there wasn't a factory reset opportunity. I had to put the latest version on, then go to mm -hmm. settings, find factory reset, hit it, boom, and then all I could do was sign it back in, go to google.com slash my glass, and put in my apps account, and boom, there it was. And it worked. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it doesn't quite work. I say, I'm, you know, I'm one of these like some of my things are in my Gmail account, some of my things are in my apps That's account. That's the so same problem. My right, photos, so like I want my apps want priority my... inbox, but I want my plus Gmail account, so it's not multiple yep. sign-in, but if you've got all your eggs in an apps basket, this helps you out. But pardon me for a rant! The, the, the issue I've had recently with the, I, I, you know, my, I, I've gone over, don't worry folks, I won't go over it long, at length here, but I've gone over this problem with multiple sign-ins, and the latest wrinkle for me was I couldn't get Google Cloud Print to work, which I have to have work because I have a Chromebook, and because it kept on thinking that I was in my other account. I, I had to go through 25 steps. I restarted the machine. It still would come back on. It, 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 I had to sign out of cloud print to sign back into another account, having no idea why it was signed into the wrong account. The machine, everything was signed into the right account. Get it figured out, Google. Yeah, every time I, I run into multiple sign-in problems on a pretty regular basis, and I think of you every time, Jeff, because I, I think that there was a time when I said to you, "Oh, it's no problem. Just you know, just switch from the drop down." It's that's actually actually a problem pretty pretty regularly. And the other <laughs> one that gets me is if you have a Google if you have a, a Google Plus link in something, right, and yes. I click on it, it yes, goes it to my machine plus. account ver versus my Plus account, and I can't open it in my Plus account. I yes. just can't comment on it. I can't do anything else. Mm -hmm. Are you listening, Google? Are you listening? <laughs> All right, so a few more updates. I want to talk about Chrome apps. Uh, a couple of Android app updates. Google started rolling out Play Music 5.2, which has two cool new features. Uh, genre radio for All Access subscribers. So if you subscribe to All Access, you can go into, let's see, uh, you can go into radio or explore. You pick your favorite genre, and you get unlimited music based on, based on what you chose. And the new app for Android also has a new download queue. So when you're, when you're pinning music or downloading, music for offline access uh, you can pause and resume and prioritize and, and, and manage your your download queue easily there um, another Android app update Google Earth has been updated to version 7.1.2 and it now has it now shows it now shows your geo encoded Google plus photos onto a map so if you're geo tagging your Google plus photos and say you've got instant upload on you're sort of automatically sending pictures from your phone to Google plus Go into Google Earth on Android. There's a new option under More Maps, which is Google Plus Photos, and Earth will overlay the photos that you took onto a Google Earth map, which is kind of a re really, really cool view. If you spend a day out and about town taking photos, uh, you can see where you went, and you can see those photos kind of overlaid on the map, which is really cool. And finally, this is a topic I want to talk about more with you guys. Google has announced Google Chrome desktop apps. This means that on, on Windows and eventually Mac and other, other platforms, you have packaged Chrome apps that run just like native apps outside of, outside of Chrome, but Chrome kind of acts as the runtime. These are going to be apps that are available in the Chrome Web Store, and they will have, um, they will have you know, native you know, access to, to, to native bits of your, of your machine in order to act just like a native app. But Chrome is kind of the runtime, um, and this, uh, these are kind of rolling out over time. 
And uh, I, I want to talk about this more with you guys. I'm kind of I'm kind of excited about this. Is really Chrome sort of becoming more of a platform, kind of like Android is, not just on the Chromebook, right, but on on every operating system. This will spread to all platforms. Uh, so that's all I got. That's all I got for the change log. Play the drums. Thank you, Google Change Log. So Jeff, I just tried it in my WordPress and it worked fine. Oh! Just posting the whole thing in there. Yeah. Oh! Just paste yeah. it right in there. Right, now I'll make be, sure you're not. Again. Make sure your uh, pasting is HTML. That you're in the. You know. Of course I do. I would do nothing. You wouldn't. Of course. Oh. Of course. Jeez. So How let me dare just. You even let me just. So I just paste. This is the code straight out of the embed. Uh, right, let me do a quick again. preview here on my. Uh, uh, WordPress. Post, add new. Actually, let me just publish it. Testing for. Okay, now let's. Uh, twit. Let's twit. visit the post. Just testing. Hey. There it no, is. Embedded never. right there in there. There it is. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah. So I post it. Okay, now I'm going to publish. If you go to buzzmachine.com right now, you'll see the fruits of what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I love that we're live, that we're live blogging. Let me see. Buzzmachine.com. Uh, Clever way nope. to get traffic. Uh, what it does it say? Jeff. It worked. Just testing pain on never mind. And there it is. Jeff, you it's were just, just impatient. It's not working for me. Well, it works for us. It. Yeah, I <laughs> see Hold it. on. Let me well, go. Now I'm really, now I'm really conf confused. It does you take a minute to load You know why? Because render. I've got to, oh, there it is. It took forever. All right. I take it back. Never mind. It takes <laughs> well, forever. then Google should Let's really see. take those instructions out. The whole, the whole, there's no need the whole for this. Jam about the yeah. head. No okay, or the it's I a little waited. confusing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I, I, I was too hasty. I waited before, and I didn't get it. But it took, it took. It a while takes a while to load. Yeah, and I yeah. think that that's what the Jimmy Jam is probably about. That if it's in your header, that that script will preload. It'll be fast. It'll, it'll be fast. It'll be faster. Yeah. 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 All right, Google. I'm sorry, but I still want you to fix. Multiple sign-in problem. Okay, <laughs> I take it back. But Whew, glad we saw that. All is not forgiven. I'm sorry. So but let's talk about this whole uh, thing, this applet thing. Applets. Wow, that's a throwback. But that is that what they're not calling it applets because that's what they are. No, they're calling they're calling their Chrome Chrome apps for your desktop. Yeah, but you have to have Chrome installed, right? You have to have Chrome installed. You obtain these from the Chrome web store. They only run. They're, they're, they have some Chrome specific code, right? So you've got to have Chrome right. installed, right? This isn't right. this doesn't work with any other browser, and they, and they don't run inside the browser. They run they're on your they're shortcuts on your desktop. They we were talking about this last on all last night on all about Android. They're almost like uh, remember Air apps. Yes, it's Adobe like, Air. It's like the runtime, right? Well, that's um, why I call them so applets. Applets really, uh, um, was originally for Java. For Java, right? You but have Java to have a runtime. Like app, we're like. App, they, they ran kind of in page though or i guess you could have desktop job you can have applets sure yeah. yeah yeah so these these apps these chrome apps for your desktop have native access to device hardware like the webcam the microphone oh. they work offline oh. they support notifications oh google oh um, oh yeah, this is these, they, such a security they, issue oh oh is it oh is it yeah <laughs> if they're not sandboxed oh yeah um, if they're not sandboxed and that they can, uh, you mean that the access... They have hardware native, access native and they're not sandboxed. I mean, I guess that it's no different than Chrome itself, but at least Google controls the code on Chrome. Um, well, Chrome OS has, obviously... What can you, native. what can you, uh, can you can only use HTML5 commands? Can you use... I believe that these apps are built with web technologies. I think that just okay. like other Chrome apps, uh, I, but I but they must have extended. I mean, there there has to be. I could just um, see the headlines you know, in about two years. Technologies that let you that let you access sort of native. This is really well, explain interesting. Explain that to me, Leo. Well, you you never want arbitrary code from the web running on your machine, ever. When you're running a, an application from Google, you're trusting Google. Um, extensions are potentially problems in general. But when the extensions oh. run outside of the browser, I mean, at least, you know, they sandbox well, do they the really run out? Here's my question. Do you have to have Chrome running to have the applet run? Yeah. Uh, I don't no, know. No, but I, I'm pretty sure. I haven't tried this. I don't have a Windows machine, but it's, it, I would imagine there's a Chrome process running, but you don't have, you, know, you don't have the actual browser. You know, isn't it, isn't it like just a, a well, mini Chrome the, the, window? The premise, like the, premise of, the premise of Java when it came out was, that it would be running a Java virtual machine. Every applet would be sandboxed 
have very limited access to the hardware resources through an API, it would be secure. And of course, we've learned that without constant, rigid attention to the JVM, which Oracle has not given Java, it's a nightmare. And I just, I, it concerns me that you're running arbitrary code on your machine. Is it possible, Leo, that this is instead like just opening up Chrome and opening up Having a, a window. browser window? If it's a Chrome tab, no problem, because they, they are it's, sandboxed. It's, like, it's, it's just a different display of a tab, right. and I don't know. Right. That's what I assumed it was, because when they, when they implemented it on the Chromebook, Pixel, which is a wonderful machine. Did I ever told you that recently? <laughs> um, uh, right. It just, basically, it's like any other tab. It's just right. It's just, but that's the Chromebook. This is Windows 8. This is a little bit different. Understood. Understood. Right. But but right. like right now, I'm talking to you on Hangouts. I wasn't concerned until Sorry. Gina said it could access files. It can run the camera. It could. Oh, I see. Yeah, but like I, you know, I let Adobe Air do that. I let I left to some. Yeah, which and it's a huge security issue. Right. <laughs> yes, you do, and it's right. a very big security issue. But no more. Air than is a real security app. issue. No more than any other native app that I install on my on my Windows desktop. I mean, any native app has access to. The difference is because it's coming from it's the, it's a it's a conduit to the internet, which is the problem, right? So native apps that don't interact with the internet are, are potentially a problem, but much less so. But what, what, every native one. app these days has some sort of automatic guess, update that yeah. phones home yeah. connects to the internet, I right? I mean, yeah. All right, never mind. I, you know, it's I, I don't secure. Know. I don't know. If, I'm, if I'm gonna trust anybody to to create a runtime oh, for my. Does Google, computer, it's... does Google vet the uh, the apps, the extensions? How much does Google vet? You this? have to get them through, the, so through the web store. So I imagine that yeah. they do, and I imagine right. the APIs are pretty well defined. Good, that's probably fine. This changes what Chrome is dramatically. So though. that's I the mean, whole this... conversation: is is this is this Google's stuff? Is this why Google put so much attention on Chrome OS, which was baffling all of us? It's a browser. It's a browser. It's a browser. But what it really is is OS, a platform. It's OS, it's is a runtime an OS a platform? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Is it? Yeah, I mean, this this brings Chrome a lot closer to what Android is, right? It this is where you're going to have trouble, though, because, okay, it's safe as long as it can't do anything that Chrome can't do. But if you're going to make these standalone apps, then you want it to do more. And that's where Java got into trouble, right? Mm -hmm. Is that, okay, well, now we're competing as an app. Now we're an app. Well, then you're going to have to be able to do some more stuff. Right. That's what concerns mm. me. Uh, well, if, you know, in other words, other if Google's though, making itself an operating system vendor, then that there's there's all the woes that that is, and and, and the whole point of Chrome OS was how secure it was because it's so limited, right? Here's the but here's the difference I think I, you know, potentially potentially architecturally is that Chrome is always connected, and so a lot of the functions that you worry about are not going to happen on your machine; they're going to happen up somewhere in the cloud, right? Um versus those apps you talked about were apps that were, you know, standalone, machine disconnected would work. There's a lot on Chrome you cannot do. The only two things I can do disconnected on Chrome are email and docs. That's it. Right? Everything else requires connection. And the connection is the path to security, I think. Maybe. Is, uh, connection is the path That's to security? That's the exact well, opposite, I mean, you Jeff. Also, I, 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 you could argue the opposite as well. <laughs> well, no, in this, I tell you, in Jeff, this it's sense, the exact opposite. No, here's why. Here's what I'm trying to say. It's because it's... Because it's it's, he's saying server-side server -side code It's not is using safer. your machine. Yeah. It's not using your machine. And that may be true. Server-side code may be safer. Maybe. I, I, I'm speculating about the architecture. Code is know. code. And if it has access to your hardware, your, your local computer's hardware resources... I mean, Google already puts out an operating system that natively accesses, you know, your right. computers. It just happens to be the, the right. smaller computers, right? I mean, Android already does this. And this is what's, what's interesting is that this brings Chrome and Android so close together. I mean, the, the, it's you can no longer say that Android's the operating system and Chrome is the browser, right? Um, right. This is a totally different thing. And, you know, Chrome has offline capabilities right now. It has push notifications. It has a lot of these capabilities. Granted, only a few native Google apps take advantage of these capabilities, but they're there. So is Google um, going after desktop computing? What is the what is the end game here? Dinner? Some called it a Trojan. The Verge called it Google's Trojan horse. How Google will find will eventually will take on Windows. Is that really what they're looking for here? That they want to be the operating system that runs all of your computers. Right. They want to be the platform that runs all your computers. That doesn't make sense because you still need to run on an OS. I mean, even Chrome runs on Linux. Right. Yep. I think that this is a way for...
developers. Yes, like Jeff, you got Linux under there. Well, but then why do I have to install? No, I, I know, but why you're do I You're installing install an Linux interface separately? to it. It's, you're just installing an interface to it. Oh, is that what it is? Because it's still calling on the same things. Okay, the kernel. It's the okay. Linux kernel there. Never mind. That was that was the stupid moment. Isn't Back it? Back to you, Gina. I may be wrong. I thought it was. They're trying to make the language of developing all apps or native desktop apps web technologies, which many companies have tried yeah. many times before. Yeah. Um, they're trying to make Chrome the platform for running these apps. They're trying to deliver the, the original vision of Java, which was, you know, this, this right ones run anywhere, right? If Chrome runs on everything and I'm a developer and I can make a native app that runs, you know, mm -hmm. the same way and right. very well and it behaves like a native app in that it can access the webcam and do notifications and, you know, it doesn't look like a browser app, uh, then I'm going to choose to do that. And that just means that Chrome gets installed everywhere which is only good for Google, right? And the, um, and the app has to be updated automatically. There's no choice that's about true updating That's true, too, which is great. Right, and that will happen through the web store. Here's so what they... Much like it happens through the Play Store. Sorry about that. Here's what they say on the uh, Packaged Apps page. What are Packaged Apps? Packaged Apps deliver an experience as capable as a native app, but as safe as a web page. By the way, this is exactly the come on of Java. Just like web apps, packaged apps are written in HTML5, JavaScript, and CSS, but packaged apps look and behave like native apps and have native-like capabilities. They're much more powerful than those available to web pages. That's what concerns me. They're much more powerful than those available to web apps. Brought to you by the NSA. Yeah. Well, it's just that's always <laughs> – this is always the balance. You know, as long as it's just a web page, but as soon as you give it hardware access, then it's more like ActiveX, you know. And yeah, JavaScript isn't inherently secure. It's just a, it's code. So, well, uh, uh, pa packaged right, apps but... load locally. This allows the apps to be less dependent on the network. Once a user installs an app, they have full control over the app's lifecycle. Apps open and close quickly. The system can shut down apps at any time to improve performance. Users can fully uninstall apps. They're modified web apps. Same code, frameworks, tools of the web platform. Some browser features have been removed, other web APIs disabled or changed to improve security and programming practices. You know, it's yeah. it's all in the implementation. Yeah. That's all in the implementation. It could be good. I mean, Absolutely. Right now, to your consternation, I'm talking to you from a uh, web page that is uh, attaches to my hardware, my camera. Well, yeah. You're running code. I mean, come on, you're just running code. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, um. Right. <laughs> web pages have a natural, there's very few things, there are a lot of things you can't do when you write a web page. Leo, you're saying that you you, you don't like the They're idea that the They're saying they want to do more. Yeah, they want to do. You're taking away the browser sandbox, right? right? There are only certain things you can do. You can only access cookies from the from the, from the sites that you put them down, and you can only execute code, you know, that, that does that does certain things. I mean, most browsers will just prevent you from doing cer certain things. Right. Uh, accessing the file system on their own and, and that kind of thing. It's all in a sandbox. Right. Uh, right. And this, one has to that's, this takes these that code out of that sandbox. Um, but hey, you know, this is the conversation we've been having, right? Like you, 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 there's yeah. always that, that trade off of, uh, you know, security versus convenience. I mean, these, these apps, it's just, uh, it is all just code, right? Yeah. And this code is going to be, um, the issue is how, how much, how much permission the code has to access what hardware resources, right? What the permissions model is like, how yeah. that's implemented. Who's, and this who, is all, yeah. who's responsible for this it? Is, yeah, and this is about Google. Yeah. I mean, Google has a lot of experience with this, right? With Android. Right. I mean, Android has some of the, you know, some of the best permission mod modeling out there. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, with Android, they've got a lot of experience with this. They've got the Chrome OS out already, so they're already running Chrome as native. I know that's on top of Linux, but still, Chrome OS accesses the file system and the webcam and all those things natively. Um, I don't know. I think this is an interesting. I think this is a really interesting proposal. I wonder if Chrome apps are ever going to run on Android. <laughs> Talk about Isn't that. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> that's that's an, an OS inside an OS. Yes. Yes. Yep. I wonder which operating system is going to win in the end. I mean, don't you, feel, don't you feel like eventually Google is going to have to choose between one or the other? If you're Sundar Pichai, what are you thinking the world looks like in three to five years? Yeah, that's a big question. Um, well, part of this, isn't this part of it because uh, Google has until recently felt like they'd lost control of Android? I think they've reasserted it. I think with Jelly Bean, um, Android now is the, the best Android experience is the Google Android experience. And I think people are going to realize that. So, but I think this might have been a defensive action against what looked like was going to happen until recently, which was that vendors, even like Samsung, 
we're just going to take Android and say, thanks, Google, see ya. We'll create all our own apps. You don't need the G apps anymore. And uh, we don't need to be tied to Google. And they were going to lose control of Android. And in that case, Chrome right. was their, their, their defense. Mm -hmm. But now they're stuck because you know what? And <laughs> Google, Google kind of is going to keep Android because you know what? It's a great experience. It's the best experience. Everybody agrees the best Android experience is now the Google experience. Yeah. Yep. I, but it, maybe not in China, but in the U.S. anyway. Just so the fact that Amazon's Kindle uses Android but doesn't doesn't defer to Google is is no longer as much of a concern, I think it was as it was to have been until recently. Do you think they'll abandon Android? Not as if it's a success and they're making money on it, and they clearly are making a lot of money on Android. Do they break that down in the in the uh, quarterly report? You know, the results. Do they say how much they make from Android? I bet they don't. I don't think so. Because that's heard interesting. Like that. It's got to be a problem. Yeah profit center for them what's wrong you're if you're if you're google uh and you're cocky don't forget what's wrong with having two os's apple has two os's yeah. microsoft has two os's what's wrong with that you can do that he just so uh focused so yeah he's he's all about focus these days i think that this is I then i think there's tension i think there's tension in terms of resources i think there's tension in terms of vision in terms of ux mm -hmm. and page is all about kind of converging those things and cutting you know cutting off other products and having a singular you know a, 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 a similar design vision across products so i think i definitely think that there's a tension inside google between android and chrome which have both been runaway successes in very different ways and both started out in very different ways. Chrome starts out as a browser. Android starts out as a mobile operating yep. system. Android was a was an acquisition. Uh, Chrome actually, was in a way, Chrome was too because it was WebKit, right? So it wasn't a yeah, it's a WebKit fork. It wasn't an in-house development, right? Right. I should, it, not a fork. I shouldn't say WebKit fork, but well, now it's a fork. It right? is Blink. now. <laughs> Blink yeah. is a fork. Yeah. 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 Both. I think you're right, Gina. On, on open source technologies, it's it's very interesting. When they were separate divisions under separate heads, I think you could argue that there was creative tension at work. Putting them both under Sundar, I got to guess his job is to figure out which one wins. Really? Why? I think so. Why I think choose? It's there's two stores. There's a web. There's a Chrome Web Store. There's a Play Store. Uh, you have. You just finished Chrome saying apps. that Larry wants Unity. Mm -hmm. I didn't say that. Gina did. Gina did. I don't know. Yeah, I, th I, mean, that, I, that, I don't see why you would uh, why you would kill one. I don't. I don't want Chrome not OS kill. on I mean, this. Not, not kill, not kill. But one has a, 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 a theoretical preeminence that that Android will run on Chrome or Chrome will run on Android. And right now, Chrome runs on Android. And where are you rating apps for in that world, and why? I'd feel safer with Android. I would love to run as I do with BlueStacks Android apps on my Chromebook. I'd be very interested in that. Wouldn't you? Right, and the and the Chromecast is a is an Android build with Chrome on top. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, yeah, it's, it's both. It's, it's kind of amazing. That's that's right. Right. <laughs> Meanwhile, there are as of today six new Chromebooks and three new manufacturers. I, I hear that HP is going to do a Chromebook. So where do we find the list of all the different new Chromebooks? It's they don't really say a lot about them, but they're all based on the Haswell. So that's very good news, by the way. That it means, is. Uh, it it's is. a that's a fast processor, fourth generation uh, processor, great power. and great battery life too. The yep. the yep. For t this the the HP is so fourteen inches, in fourteen inch Chromebook, full size, two ninety nine from HP. Oh, I, oh, I didn't see the details. Ooh. Yeah. And and while Android devices fly off the shelves, I mean, are they actually? Sorry, Jeff, are they selling these Chromebooks? I mean, oh, yeah. are, they, well, are they selling? I think they are. It's the number one uh, computer on Amazon, isn't and it? And under under three hundred bucks, it's twenty five percent of the market. And I'm ruining my numbers, but screw it. And they're in five thousand schools, which is twenty percent of the district. It's a good choice for schools, I think. Very good. Choice. Excellent great, choice. Great choice for education. Yeah. Uh, and I think internationally. If once once connectivity is good in a country, this shows you the way to go. So it's a 14-inch screen, which is the uh, HP. this is the HP. Three USB 2 ports, RJ45. It's got Ethernet. Wow, you don't even have that on a Macintosh. I don't have it. <laughs> Headphone out. This is for schools, clearly. Headphone out. Microphone in. HDMI. Card reader. Two ninety nine, and you get a hundred gigs of Google Drive with it. Where uh, is this the odd player? No, this is on HP's site. HP. Oh, 
Uh, let's, Any of the others listed? Uh, well, I just Aces? I just looked for this one first. Uh, let's see. It's a oh, this is a Celeron. This is an eight forty seven Celeron. Well, that's the existing one. This is not the new one. Okay, not so the there's, one. so okay. there are I don't new think ones. We've announced enough yet. Let's yeah, see. The HP that one's in the stores now. A little clunky. I didn't know the HP made one. All right, let's. Yeah. Uh, HP, Acer, Asus, Toshiba all announce uh, new Chromebooks. Um. Let's see. H. Let's see. HP Chromebook and the H Acer Chromebook are live now. This is the uh, HP. Oh, it's pretty. 14-inch display. 0.81 inches thick. Four pounds. What the hell is in there? <laughs> Four pounds. <laughs> what? That's is that four pounds. Yet? Doesn't have. Uh, doesn't look like it has a price yet. This is. Uh, are, is this? Are you sure this is the Haswell one? This Not is the, the new one. one. It's on Google's. This uh, is the site. new one. Okay. Here's and this is the Acer, 11 dis 11 inch display, smaller display, 2.76 pounds. That's more like it. Eight and a half hours of uh, use Samsung. That's not new, right? That's the one we saw before. Here's Unless the they just swap the chip. Acer. Four hours of battery. Forget about That's it. That's the old one. That's the old one. These are the it's old ones. I'm going back yeah. to the old ones now. So uh, hmm. this is the uh, new Acer. 11-inch display, 100 gigs Google Drive, eight and a half hours. I like the battery life. These must be Haswell yeah. for the, considering yeah. the battery life. They've doubled the battery life on some of these. Two ninety nine. That's pretty colorful. This is uh, C is for kids. <laughs> they love the colorful. color. They colorful love the kids. color. I, you know, I, I think every school. This is what school should be using. Not an iPad. Yeah. Not Windows. Not a MacBook Air. Well, no, wait, 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 wait. Let's let's play back the tape. When I made fun of the LA school system getting uh, iPads. iPads. I did, too. You I said, do? Oh, yes. Okay. Well, you okay. don't mistake me for thinking that was a good $30 million deal. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. That was oh, terrible. Okay. And they bought it with a bond, right. a 30-year bond. They'll be paying for okay. iPads. I think you still may have been baiting me about the Chromebook, though. No, no, no. I think the Chromebook's good for education. I've never, I've always thought it. That's, it's good in limited environments like education, a business where the IT department doesn't want to mess with it. Yep, um, yep. I don't think they're good for anybody who has a home computer. But I think this is great for schools. It's nice to see schools come around from, you know, installing Net Nanny and limiting access oh, to the internet to buying a, right. a computer that's based on a browser. Right. Oh, but I, I'm on the I'm on the education Chromebook uh, Google group and it's hilarious to see what the IT guys will do to or the security guys will do to the poor person who's implementing Chromebooks. <laughs> really? Oh no. Oh yeah, stupid stuff of oh well, what about this? What about that? Well, no, no, that's what Windows machines you have to worry about. This is different. It's a browser. And 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 the the need for Google to help them educate their colleagues is is great. The HP is going to be two ninety nine available in white, turquoise, and peach. Uh, unfortunately, a low res fourteen inch screen, thirteen sixty six by seven sixty eight. So that's a little bit Ooh. disappointing. Sixteen gigs of storage, um, and of course, it's not touch. I still am looking for something somewhere in between this and the yes, Pixel. Yes, that's what's needed. Yes, that's absolutely what's needed. How much does it add? An expense to do a touch screen. Oh, a lot, I think. That's the, that's a five hundred dollar. I we don't we don't see any sub five hundred dollar touch screens. I don't think, unless I'm missing something. What's the cheapest ten inch tablet though? Oh gosh, there's lots screen. of cheaper ones. There's two. Well, that's what I'm saying. If you can do a t tablet at a low price, well, twenty dollars to add a touch screen to a laptop uh, says Mav HC in the chat room. Uh, all right, let's uh, move on. Uh, Motorola says they're shipping 100,000, I'm sorry, 99,999 Moto X phones from Texas because one came back from Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's That seems like a decent amount. Not huge. I, I would say that's probably a, considers, uh, Motorola probably considers that a success. Yeah? Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's all we have. Well, here's a, here's back back to Apple for one quick second. Do yeah. you think that there are going to be lines at the store for Apple, or, or are we over that? Fight? Oh, that's a good question, actually. 
Because Apple did something which I cannot think of why they did it except to encourage lines. They allow you to pre-order the 5C on the 13th for delivery on the 20th. They do not allow you to pre-order the 5S. You have to go to a store to get it if you want to get it on the 20th. Is that, I mean, there can't be any reason for that except we want a line. Give it up. Which sucks. It does. That's like, oh, yeah, we're going to sacrifice our customers for better marketing. That well, sucks. They just want to get you in the yeah. That they sucks. want to get the folks who are willing to spend a lot more money for the five S, the, the the hardcore, the 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 grown ups with a little extra cash, the the people who are really hardcore and want the powerful device. They want them in the door so that they buy some more stuff. But yeah, I agree. No, that sucks. Clearly, a line thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not saying it. As somebody who for the you know I waited in line for the first two, but but as somebody who in the last couple of years has just pre ordered it the week before and it comes on that day and that's beautiful. I don't have to get up out of my seat. I think to, to, to screw your customers so that you get better coverage in the local news at 6 o'clock is stupid. That's very frustrating. And it's not supply com constraints. I don't see how making people come to the store has anything to do with that. I think you're right, Gina. It's the lines, but it's also getting people in the store so that they buy the case and they, they buy, buy a case, cable. They pick up and, a, oh, let's yeah. get an iMac while we're here. They're so pretty. Pick up an Air. Oh, I've been meaning to look at these minis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's spend $23,000. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just think that's disappointing. Well, I have the retail I, experience. Unless I'm missing something, and there's some reason why this makes sense. It sounds to me like pure marketing, and that's sad. I wonder, too, about the, about the plans. That stuff. They put up the list of all the plans for the iPhones, and, and there's, there's a ridiculous one. I think it's, it's AT&T has like a $500 a month plan. You don't what? even get unlimited data. What do you get? You get unlimited it's phone gold. Unlimited messages. And you get, you know, 50 gigs of data. Oh. Now, I pay, though this was a whole other rant, when I switch phones back and forth, I go to the a and &T store to say, I need to switch this device. I have an unlimited plan. Don't F with my unlimited plan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no problem. Mook, you mook. <laughs> and, hey, no problem. We could do whatever uh, you want. So guess what? Of course, I get a message at one in the morning. You're out of data, you fool. You what? have no plan. Oh. Yes. And I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm psychotic enough. This, this keeps me up. I, I, I go to Twitter. I go all over. It's, it's, it's Friday night. I got other stuff going on. I spent 39 minutes on the phone with them to get it switched, and they told me it was going to take 21 days to switch it. <laughs> it did happen the next day because I suspect somebody on Twitter looked like, oh, yeah, he's ranting again. Couldn't get him this time. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> That's funny. T-Mobile looks better and better. I love T-Mobile. Go to T-Mobile on your Nexus 5. Plus yes. one. Plus one. Is that, is that yeah. the new thing that we're all doing? Plus one. Plus one. <laughs> the, uh, the iOS 7 release is actually a really big deal for developers. This is the week where developers are scrambling to the be 18th. together. You, so, yeah. you got one yeah. week, kids. You got one week to get your, uh, your act together there. Yeah, I mean, my app is a very standard list. We're not doing anything too crazy. We're doing anything too custom, but it looks totally different in iOS 7, and we definitely had to make some changes. Color, uh, Gina, color. Do they give you a palette that says, you know, this is the color palette, or how does you that know, work? We, we use the standard UI views with the standard of the default colors. So like the, you know, sort of the gray, the gray chrome is now just flat white. Uh, and the button labels are just changed into the so so it just it, it just it does it, it automatically to that and it, to the default you know whatever the de default system right. colors are so and I didn't really look look beyond that uh, there, you can definitely you, there's got to be a way to customize uh, you know choose your own colors if you have your own, if your app has its own palette or has its own styles yeah, uh, we were just using the default but if you're using own. any of the just the default Apple styles for your you know your settings area or anything um, those look pretty different I now, would so. I would stick with the default because you don't want to. Pick a color that clashes or something. <laughs> people, if people are buying iOS seven, you want to look like iOS seven. Oh, Everything's yeah, gonna clash. With you right, don't want to be the thing. center. Oh no, I want everything to be <laughs> skeuomorphic. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Or and have depth. Don't you right? love yeah, it that as Apple is abandoning all leather and stitching, the Galaxy Note three has a stitched pleather back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> something for everyone. We're all about <laughs> choice here at Samsung. Speaking of Samsung, I went to an event in New York this week. They're opening a new incubator in New York, uh, a different incubator uh. model. Old friend of mine, you Pender Chardonnay, starting a company there. It was, uh, it was neat. 
An incubator for uh, mobile focus companies? Uh, for no, like app not necessarily companies? at all. New companies. Correct. They did They did have a developer conference, or, or have they had that yet? They, I don't think they've had it yet. They've I, announced, it's I guess it's October. They did announce a developer conference. What did you guys think about the new Yahoo logo? <laughs> I, I have to Ooh. give props uh, to uh, Marissa Meyer's geeky blog post. Yep. Yeah. But Renee Ritchie, uh, who was a designer in an earlier life, said, are you kidding? Corel draw bezels? This is the best Marissa could come up with. She, they uh, had an intern. They're, they're, what is it? Rex, our intern, did a video. This is, <laughs> let me, I gotta, you know what? I've gotta read the, uh, the, the pros in this. And I, I admire Marissa Meyer. Um, I don't want to make fun of her, but. <laughs> This, this, uh, I really like that she thanked her intern, but this did feel very much like, like a case of you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. You know? So one weekend, um, this is what she wrote. So one weekend this summer, I rolled up my sleeves and dove into the trenches with our logo design team, Bob and Mark and Russ and our intern, Max. We spent the majority of Saturday and Sunday designing the logo. We spent the whole weekend from start to finish, and we had a ton of fun weighing every minute detail. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> you don't want the logo to be a thing you do over the weekend. Over the weekend, the summer. over yeah, the like, summer. Like, I don't think she realized it sounded so, tri you know, like trivialized. Oh. And I just, I mean, the designer folks in my in my circle of friends were All just the designers absolutely hate it. appalled. All appalled. the designer hate designers hate it. For mm -hmm. instance, this is an example that uh, Renee. I'm not a designer. I don't know. I have. It looks yeah. good to me. I don't know. Either. I'm a mook. Ah, I don't love the bezel, but yeah. Yeah, the bezel is dumb. So uh, apparently, <laughs> the typography doesn't offend me, but the bezel is bad. But well, the designers were totally offended by the ty typography because they wanted mathematically all the letters to be the right. You know, a programmer would kerning. say, "Yeah, they didn't do any kerning." They the typographer wants kerning. The programmer in them wants them to be uniform, and that's not how you do it. The, uh, you the, know what? The millions of users out there couldn't give a crap. I know. It's just... A, yeah, no, it's, no one... They don't even notice. There. No, no. <sighs> but, they, but this does kind of harken back to the that post from uh, that designer who was at Google who said that Google would test, yeah. you know, every shade of blue, that it was a data decision, that you know, a data-driven decision. Was it wasn't about design. Was and, and yeah, Meyer brought that, I think, a little bit <laughs> to, to this logo design. And here you go. Our last move... We decided to tilt the exclamation point by nine degrees just to add a bit of whimsy. <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, you're right. It doesn't really matter. Go ahead, Marissa. You're doing so many good things uh, for Yahoo. I really like the new Yahoo weather app. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we'll forgive her playing around a little bit with the typography. Yeah, I mean, you know, she's making the company her own. That's good. Yep. Wish, wish she had gotten rid of the exclamation point. Uh, yeah, same here. Apparently that wasn't on the that. table. Yeah. That was not yeah, on no, the that table. Wasn't, that yeah. wasn't on the table. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wow. It's not ter It's not terrible. It's not. I don't know. I'm not a designer. Uh, Renee, who is there? You go. There's a little tilt. Renee, who tilt. is a designer, said it's horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> but designers are given to hyperbole when it comes to design, right? Yeah. Oh yes. He was I'm a kern freak. The, the kerning between the Y and kerning's the wrong. A is a little bit it's off. Wrong. Yeah. yeah, the kerning's wrong. Kerning's done by a non-typographer. All right, I think we should do one more uh, ad and then come back with our tip tool number of the week. Jeff, you'll find a number. I see numbers all over the... I've got them. No, I've got, I've got, I've got them. All right, all right. And I've got well, a you great... might want. You might want, or maybe the end of the show, the Airbnb movie is fun. All right, we'll play it at the end of the show. They, uh, they, they're taking crowd-supplied uh, vines yes. to... Uh, to do a little Airbnb ad. Our show today brought to you by, and this is good timing, squarespace.com. The secret behind, I bet you, I should try this. I bet you, you can embed Google Plus in Squarespace. Google Plus works in Squarespace, they say. Uh, Squarespace is really a great place. It's, it's hosting plus the best content management system to make a wonderful site that'll never go down. We asked people to, to tweet us with your Squarespace website, I'd love to show uh, show s some some sites on the show at some point. Uh, just use the hashtag Twit Squarespace, and we'll take a look, and we'll mention some of your sites in future uh, shows. One of the reasons I do that is because what's neat is they have these wonderful templates. You start with twenty beautiful 
mobile responsive templates, but then you make it your own. And you don't have to be a designer to do this. You can drag and drop. You can uh, add plugins for all your favorite social networks. You can import all your content, including pictures, links, even comments from your existing site, and then get a gorgeous site. And you can do this all for free because when you click the Get Started button at squarespace.com, you're going to get two weeks free without a credit card or anything. Get plenty of time to play with Squarespace take the uh, they have workshops and tutorials if you decide to buy it starts at eight dollars a month with the annual plan and you get a free domain name they hook it up they have commerce for twenty four dollars a month and that's it includes everything including things like tax calculations inventory control shipping calculations I got to tell you Squarespace is great you got to try it no credit card required to do get two weeks free just click the get started button when you do decide to sign up we invite you to use our offer code twig9 that's t-w-i-g in the number nine you get 20 percent off your first purchase squarespace.com offer code twig and the number nine all one word and we thank you squarespace for your support gina trapani your tip of the week my tip of the week is actually a tool this week, a uh, tool that I've, I've started using in, in artist. It's called Draft. Uh, I've got a draftin.com. This is a really, really cool web app that's basically like GitHub for writers. Um, so it's, it's, it's a place that you can write a tweet or a blog post or an email, and then you can send it to say, you know, say uh, I can send it to you, Leo. Say I'm going to write a post about, about Twig, for example, for my blog. I can send it to you. You can propose changes, and then I can, you know, accept on a change-by-change -change basis, accept or reject a change um, over time. So it really it helps you collaborate with others on, on drafts, and then it publishes what you want to um to whatever service that you want so oh yeah they actually they also have professional editors that you can you can you can click that ask a professional button you can get a professional wow. editor to look at your writing uh it supports supports markdown which is great great for markdown nerds and then you can publish to lots of different places you can publish to wordpress to tumblr to twitter uh to mailchimp so you can it's basically a place that you it's just it's just a place to write and it's a very very simple interface very well designed app and um it helps you kind of collaborate it saves revision control over time so it really it really appeals to me as, as a nerd writer because it gives me kind of that that nice github uh those nice github features without the crazy uh difficult github <laughs> github hmm. interface uh we we interviewed kevin and i interviewed the founder of draft uh nate conti uh on one of our on the episodes of our show in beta on five by five and he's a really really thoughtful guy who's just thinks that writing better changes the world which i agree um, and has been, you know, making making this app really for himself, and so to encourage more people to write more often. And he's really done a nice job with it. So check it out if you're looking for a writing tool. I'm actually using it to to write some. Uh, I'm, I'm going to relaunch my blog, and I'm using it to to write and think about and edit and collaborate on some posts that I'm working on. And I've just been really really loving it. So this check it out. Amazing. It's free free to try, and then you can. Uh, I don't know. It's like three bucks a month if you want to support the app. This is amazing. Yeah, it's a really, it's Beautiful. a really nice app. He's done a really nice job on it. You know, Amber and I were going to write a book we never did, but we, I set up SVN to keep. It was like a pain in the yeah, ass. Yeah, yeah, it's totally, totally crazy. Yeah, yeah, but the idea of using versioning for for uh, text is a great idea. And it's a be much better implementation than like words track changes. Uh, everything yeah. is in plain text. I could it's imagine this for all of so. my my faculty. Mm hmm. Oh. Mm hmm. It's you just, could work with a student because it has yeah. the editor yeah. mode, so you could you could have a student submit their papers this way. Yep. Um, oh my gosh! It uses Markdown. This yep. is great. Draftin.com. Oh, I love this. Too bad I don't. Ev Williams. Part of part of Ev's goal with Medium was to allow more collaboration, but in a very simple way. This is much more elegant. Well, I can. I would guess the guy who wrote this is looking to be acquired by somebody like Ev. Yeah. This yeah, yeah, I wonder, yeah, possibly. Yeah. You know, editorially just launched, which I believe is a similar thing. I haven't had a chance to try it, but Medium, I, I, it's, it's, it's kind of neat to see, well, especially for someone who loved Wave, and I mean, Wave was about collaborating on, on yeah, documents, right? right? Yeah. Uh, uh, but didn't didn't do it as, as simply and as, and as easily as this. Um, I think that there's definitely a market here, and, and I, I, I just think Microsoft Word, track changes doesn't do it. GitHub, version control doesn't quite do it. Version control is great for code, not as, good, not as easy for pros. I think there's definitely a, a need here. And um, yeah, I'm trying to, it, it's, it's helping me write more. I, I find that I write more when I have tools that I really enjoy using. And, and so that alone, you know, it's been worth it. Medium has a kind of a similar thing, right? It's composed features. So, right. so nice and so slick that it makes you want to write, write well. And so I've had the same experience with Draft. 
I uh, love his lorem ipsum. Tootsie Roll <laughs> Tiramisu Fruitcake Wafer. <laughs> Wipe us bonbon, candy, carrot, cake, macaroon, cupcake, candy canes, apple pie, sweet <laughs> bear claw muffin for No commercial this words is, like Kit Kat and Arrow. I was going to say, this is like, it's like a string of potential <laughs> Android buildings. <Yes. laughs> pastry, sesame, snaps, pastry, croissant, lemon drops, cheesecake, marshmallow. Marzipan. Ooh, can't you Ooh. imagine Android marshmallow? Mmm. Yeah. Yeah. Or Malomar. We'll see. <laughs> Malomar. Depends. Depends who they do the deal with. Moon Pie. Yes, I'm using Android Moon Pie 7.9. Jeff Jarvis's number of the week. Uh, real short. Forrester analyst says that the NSA's uh, diddling with our uh, security and safety and privacy and uh, freedom will cost American technology companies $180 billion. Oh, man. Wow. But to put that number in perspective, Mexico not making it to the World Cup will cost them six hundred billion dollars. Oh, so no. it's all oh, it's all relative. Yeah. I saw that on the soccer game last night. Billions in sales. I think that's not surprising. In fact, I think that number is way low. I don't wear the I think they that's a low number. number. It's and it says in the headline Google and then it only mentions Google in there, it doesn't yeah. say anything. Yeah. Oh. So uh, my tip is a little self-serving. My tool is a little self-serving. But uh, we have, there is a new Android app for Twit. And I oh, really, yay. yeah, and it's nice. It's called Twit Pro. and uh, it, it, it won the arena by, Jason put it in the arena, and it killed all of us. Everyone loves it. It's, yeah, it's a great app. Great. You showed it on All About Android last night, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it has chat, which is wonderful. Uh, really easy to use. Now, we have some great uh, authors doing wonderful Twit apps, and I don't want to discourage Houdini7 or FCon or anybody. In fact, let the games begin, huh? But uh, I don't... I, what's the guy's name? I want to... Is it Mark? Oh, look, it's us. Oh, that's Mark us. Hampton. <laughs> Mark Hampton. And then here's this calendar on it, and uh, you can enable chat, so you can... To change your default channel, change the stream. I just think this is nicely done. Watch. You can watch and watch chat at the same time. Isn't that cool? Oh, Meta, look oh. at that. Ooh. I do the same thing. You showing the app on the app. Very meta. It's going to get weirder. It is going to get weird. Yeah, it's, it's about to get weird. <laughs> so it's called Twitch Pro. You can search for it on Play Store. And what's kind of amazing about it is it's free. So nice. uh, you have thank some you. great listeners. We man. have the best. And that's why I don't want to tell anybody uh, not to do this. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Um, very, very nicely done. He's already yes. updated it a little bit. Awesome. Um, yeah. Hey, that's it for this week in Google. I hope you enjoyed our show. Bon voyage. Or, 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 excuse me. Excuse me. Wait a second. Bon viaggio. Oh, I was, oh. oh, you ruined. I was going to ask Google. Oh, wait, yeah, we could do it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, actually, that'd be interesting. Okay, Google now. How do you say bon voyage in Italian? What phone are you using? The Nexus? Yeah. It's there. Viaggio sicuro. No, really? I think that's not colloquial. It says French to Italian. Safe journey. Wow, it knew bon voyage was French. Yes. That's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, okay, wait a second. Wait, 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 try again. How do you say Guto Reza in Italian? No, it's how do you say Google Reza? Okay, we'll try again. <laughs> how do you say Guto Reza in Italian? No. Nope. You know what? It, it recognized Bon Voyage in the American Dictionary, probably. Yeah, that's probably mm -hmm. what it is. Yeah. How Wonderful trip, Leo. I'm excited. Gonna have a miss great I'm going to miss you guys. You earned it. We'll Take you. some time. Take great <sighs> photos. Eat amazing food. It's killing me. You're going to be in Italy. It's killing Italy, me. Italy. I love Italy. And I just hear That's great things about Turkey, too. Me. I hear good things uh, about Turkey, too. Yeah, we're going to Kanakali and... Uh, are you uh, taking a gas mask? No. No. I'm on a boat. What could go wrong? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I can't. You know, Syria is just over the border. I don't know what's going to yeah. happen. It's, we, I don't know what's going to happen. And I'm not going to bring my most important computer with the, all the secrets, the state secrets. The Chromebook. Just in case you're, yeah. yeah, just in case you're worried. <laughs> hey, uh, Jeff Jarvis is at buzzmachine.com. That's where he blogs. Soon to be embedding Google links.
Plus links. Uh, 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 with humility. <laughs> he also is the author of Public Parts, What Would Google Do? Professor of Journalism at the City University of New York and a great guy, and we love you, Jeff. He's always a pleasure. Gina Trapani, we love you, too. She is the uh, blogger at Spuzz Machine, I'm sorry, smarterware.org, but also writes ThinkUp app, thinkup.com, a great Twitter analyzation app, analysis app, and... Um, uh, to do text.com soon to be iosified ios sevenified <laughs> yes i'll yes. be up this weekend very late wow going why doesn't it work hey, why why? <laughs> no it should be easy yeah it shouldn't be bad be it's easy. a great show uh have a great trip leo we're Thank gonna you. miss you yeah, i'm gonna miss enjoy, you guys enjoy i will this will be Stay one back. of the first shows i'll do when i get back and i can't wait yay we do this weekend google on wednesdays 1 p.m pacific 4 p.m eastern time 2000 UTC on twit.tv. Please watch live if you can't. On-demand audio and videos on our website, twit.tv slash T-W-I-G. Or subscribe, you know, you know, on whatever tool you use, including Twit Pro, and you'll get it every week, and that way you won't miss an episode. See you next time. Well, in three weeks, on This Week in Google. <laughs>